Welcome everyone to our final day of coverage here at Next Gen Dallas. We are here, of course, at the beautiful Chicken and Pickle in Prairie Ridge, Texas. It's been such a fantastic weekend as always with our Next Gen young players. We are hit here in the head pickleball pregame show and going into today, which is our final day of singles, a reminder throughout the weekend, our players accumulate points based on where they finished during the day. And at the end of the weekend, we crown a champion based on their accumulated points throughout the weekend. And going into today, at the top of our leaderboard for the women is Sarah Williams, followed by Ivy Cheddar, and third place is Taylor Crabtree for our gentleman. Austin Chikatilov has that top spot, followed by Ursilio Cabiesis and Jack Foster. So going in today, those players are for sure going to be fighting it out for a top spot finish today to be able to be crowned next gen champion here in Dallas. It's going to be a fabulous day of singles. Hopefully we'll have some new players here on center court that we have not got to see yet here this weekend. It's going to be a really great time. Thank you again so much for joining us, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook all weekend. A reminder, next weekend, the APP Tour is in Alabama. We will be live streaming that tournament. It's a Tier 2 tournament. So again, some new faces being introduced to the pickleball world, some opportunities perhaps for some of our players to hit the podium in a pro event that have not yet. But right now, it's all about that upcoming next generation of pickleball. We're going to take a short break. Starting us off here on center court are going to be our ladies. Riley Bonert is taking on Bella Nelson. After this short break, we're back into the action. Welcome back, everyone, for our first match here today. Jack Foster, get out of the All camera. Right, ladies, this match is best to us 3 to 11, <laughs> wing by two. see his mop of curls in the camera. Tiny. All right, we have Bella zero, Nelson zero. on the far end, almost served before Bob is done calling the score. Riley Bonert is going to be on the near end, wearing very similar outfits. Zero, like zero. It. Bob Swiss Helmar, USA Pickleball Certified Referee. Point. Isabella, AKA Bella Point. Nelson, 16 Zero. years old out of Deerfield Beach, Florida, a junior in high school. Again, on the far end is Bella Nelson. Great spot Point. there from Bonert. Riley Bonert on the near end, 17 years old out of Louisville, Kentucky. Two, zero. Point. Bonert, the number four seed here for our ladies in their singles bracket, while Nelson Three, the number zero. five. Point. Great shot there. And again, the cool thing about Next Gen is all of the players have to play all Four, three zero. days. So a lot of players perhaps 
are not normally singles players, but because we are trying to round out a player's development in Boy. all areas, it's really cool to be able to kind of have everyone play singles and get exposed to what it takes to play singles, Five, what shots go into that that are a little different from the doubles game. And a good amount of these Boy. players may not play singles in tournaments, maybe just for fun or in rec, Six, but it, it's a good exposure for them. And again, these next-gen tournaments. Oh, almost there for Nelson, but again, the point of next-gen really is the player development of these young players. I got to talk to them yesterday during our mentoring program where we have some chats with them. Paul Olin, our senior pro mentor, has talked both days on some different subjects. Aaron Resnick out of uh, the Pickleball Clinic talked yesterday as well, but talking to them, it, you know, we think a lot of these young players, certainly they are the future of the sport of pickleball, but realistically there's, there's a good chance a, a high number of these young players don't ultimately make pro pickleball their career. They'll maybe go to college, seconds, you know, get involved in some other hobbies and activities that they like. So it's just a really great opportunity when they are young to expose them to some things to think about if they want to perhaps pursue pickleball ultimately. We want to prepare them as best we can, give them the tools and information to make good decisions about that. Great spot there from Bella. Great job coming out of that timeout. Just sort of regrouping. Getting settled a little bit. Zero, seven. Oh, great recovery off the Boy. net there from Nelson. I thought that might sneak by her after this catches the net. Great job by Bonert, getting up to that net. Putting a little extra pressure on Nelson there, cutting down some of the angles. A lot of the women's game in singles, we are Seven, seeing one. skew a little bit more towards sort of that ground stroke style game as a lot of tennis players are coming into the sport. Point. They are getting up to the net eventually during some of these rallies. Eight, some one. players definitely making moves earlier than others, but generally speaking on the women's side, they stay back a lot longer. Bonert doing a great job getting up there though, but Nelson finds the angle in the beautiful drop here. That two-handed backhand, one, really eight. well placed. I thought that might have been a little wide, but again, just Bonert hits a lot of power on her shots. Eight, one. She had a little bit of an angle there as well. Point. That ball died a little bit there as it reached Nelson, making it hard to get that back up and over. Nine, one. It's going to go a little long, and that's going to be a game point here for Riley Bonert. Ten, one. Point and game. First nice game, serve there. One, All right, Riley Bonert takes game one. We'll see if Bella Nelson has a little bit more success in game two. Able to hit some more shots, get that serve back a little bit more often. We'll take a short break back into the action here for our ladies' singles right after this.
Welcome back, everyone, to Chicken and Pickle Dallas for our final day of coverage here at Next Gen. On the far end for game two is Riley Bonert, 17 years old, out of Louisville, Kentucky. Her opponent on the near end, 16-year-old Bella Nelson. Out of Deerfield Beach, Florida. Bonert finding the shots she needed to hit in game one to take her over the top. Point. We'll see if Bonert maybe makes some moves here to get to the net a little bit quicker. Looks like she was trying to do that during that last rally. Oh, Point. good idea from Nelson trying to switch it up here after. Bonert had kind of put her shots in the same area. A little follow it in. Oh, yeah. Nelson making that move just a little late. She had a good shot that she needed to follow in. She made about half of a move, and that put her actually out of position. She got exactly what she wanted. That was textbook great job. Hit a nice angle, got up to that net, got a pop up. And unfortunately, the error into the net on the put away. She found the right formula, though. I'd like to see her. Again, a lot of these players don't play singles a lot. Definitely looks like this isn't Nelson's first time playing singles for sure. I would like to see her. As we talk a lot, even at the pro level, a lot of the women, we talk about needing to get to that net quicker. They need to follow in some of their really great shots, especially if they're deep and they're going to be dropping and their opponent is not going to be able to volley them out of the air. It's a great shot. you got to just recognize as you get more used to playing singles, when are the right moments to make that move up to the net, cut off some of the angles for your opponent, put yourself in a little bit better position to control the rally. Time in, please, ladies. Seven, zero. Point. Eight, zero. Oh, just missing that back corner. Tough spot. Nelson's had Nine, the right idea. She's having the right strategy, picking some good spots. She's, she's just not Point. quite executing as you see there you know the, the previous rally a little bit wide on her shot that one a little long Point. Game and match. but again game that is that's the right zero. spot for her to be that returning down is. that line you see that at the pro level all the time but ultimately riley bonart just a little bit stronger here in this matchup so she will continue on in our upper bracket as i mentioned we have men's and women's singles to conclude the day. At the end of today, we'll be able to crown a champion based on the points accumulated throughout the weekend. And we will take a short break back into the action here with our next singles match here on a beautiful Sunday in Dallas, Texas. Don't go anywhere. Take me out, man.
Welcome back, everyone, as Garrett takes a seat on the court. I was like, oh, just taking a rest, taking a rest. We have a quarterfinal match here for our men's singles bracket. We have Garrett Whitehead on the near end. 17 years old out of Draper, Utah. He takes on Josiah, the denim demon, Wagey. Josiah, 19 years old from New Braunfels, Texas. This should be a very good matchup. These two players are both very good. We talked yesterday in our talk about branding and image, and uh, Josiah certainly has one. People might not know who he is or his name, but if someone says, hey, have you ever seen that kid that plays in jeans all the time? They might know who you're talking about. It's Josiah. He comes from a family of 10. He has nine brothers and sisters. And he has no racket sport background at all. And he said he gets all of his power from the axe throwing that he does. So a unique individual for sure. One of the nicest guys, as is Garrett Whitehead. I don't think Garrett has axe throwing in his resume, however. Maybe I should ask and not assume that. Oh, Wagey's got a floater. He was drooling about that one. I think possibly just took his eye off the ball there for a moment. Courtney Johnson back out as our USA Pickleball certified referee. Oh, uh, yeah, he was on the line. I saw it, too. You can see it, that left foot kind of snuck a little forward onto that line when he served. Whitehead has Four, two. a very intense spin serve. Works to his advantage. Oh, my goodness, that little wrist flick on the backhand side from Whitehead here. Watch this one right here. I mean, I thought for sure he was going up the line with that. Didn't even think he had the angle. Again, a little bit different from the ladies' match that we just saw previously. You're going to see these guys getting up to the net as quickly as they can. Whitehead there following his return. That one stays in. Whitehead thought for sure that was going out. Again, Whitehead getting up to the net, so he's able to control that rally a little bit better. He's Five, cut three. down some of Josiah's options. Just missed that 
sideline. Yep, does, does look like he just missed it. Oh, again, look at these hands. I mean, great angle there from Wagey. Six, three. He's handling the spin serve very well. Oh. Oh, tough. Great anticipation. Was in the right spot, just overcooked it a little bit. Timeout here from Wagey. As Whitehead pulling away just a little bit. Again, I think Josiah's right there. I think he has had the opportunities. Just a little bit of execution. He's getting a, some secrets told to him. Yeah, I think, you know, I think both these players doing very well I think there's been a couple unforced errors or forced errors on the side of Josiah Wagey that has put Whitehead in a little bit better position on the scoreboard here in game one we'll see what the advice here is and if we have any noticeable change in the way that Wagey's going to come out of this timeout Is long, good timeout, good result. Three, seven. Yeah, I mean, he just smacks that ball. Again, he doesn't have traditional strokes per se without having a racket background, but just doesn't matter. Pickleball doesn't matter. Oh, unlucky break there. Some of the top pros in pickleball these days do not have a racket sport background and have never played tennis. So that is certainly not an indication of whether or not a player can be successful in pickleball, which is one of the cool things about the sport. Oh, nice hands, nice hands. Both these players doing such a great job. Again, they know in singles how important it is. If you can volley that shot out of the air, it doesn't allow your opponent as much time to set up. You can see there, Wagey. Oh, great job by Whitehead. But again, Wagey being aggressive, getting up to that net, following his shots. And you will notice it does seem like Wagey is much more comfortable with his forehand. He's running around his backhand. Again, great hands. We've had some nice exchanges from these guys so far here. Good recovery off the net. And again, look at Wagey just coming out of nowhere, crashing the net, getting up there, being aggressive. Oh, that, oh, that one I was surprised he let drop. Yeah, really nicely done from Whitehead. He's already at the net, a little bit more established. You can see Wagey's making a move to cover the middle and that far sideline. Whitehead, great recognition of that. Just out there. Fairly even right now. The score has been stuck here now for several side outs. And we've had a few really nice hands battles at the net. About 50-50 who's coming out on top of them right now.
Great job. Again, Wagey is tall. He's got a little bit more length than Whitehead does right now. So he does a great job getting on top of that ball. And again, he's just being very aggressive in a smart way. He's being very deliberate. serve there for Whitehead. Hasn't gotten many free points off his serve. Maybe the second one here in this first game, but certainly coming out of that timeout does seem like Wagey has had a little bit better handle on the situation here. Has cut into Whitehead's lead. Whitehead is the number four seed while Wagey is the number 20 here. And just for context, we had 43 young men here this weekend for next gen and 13 young ladies so mentioned it earlier in the weekend as well but especially if you know any young ladies that play pickleball that would love an event like this who would like to meet some other people their own age perhaps get some high level play that they might not have at home i mean we are looking for all young players but especially some young ladies we'd love to get them involved get them into an event like this and start to build the lady side of the game, which even at the pro level uh, is certainly less deep than the men's side right now, just in terms of numbers and therefore how deep that talent runs. Great job. Whitehead just in control. That whole rally really dictating what was going on. Such a smart player. At such a young age. Oh, tough break. The net cord. Yeah, we've seen Whitehead and Wagey at several next gen events now, and seeing their growth and development is so cool. We are back into the action with game two after this short break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back into the action here for game two in this men's singles quarterfinal matchup here for Next Gen Dallas. Lauren McLaughlin here on the mic as I have been all weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. We have Josiah Wagey on the near end, a.k.a. the Denim Demon. He takes on Garrett Whitehead on the far end. Just missing that put away. We saw Wagey miss a put away in game one as well. He has one of the craziest overheads I've ever seen. He just hits it so hard, and he told me he attributes that to the axe throwing that he does. Yeah, Whitehead just is a little bit at a higher level than Wagey right now. He just seems to be a little bit more in control able to be a little more deliberate about where he's placing his shots. And he's, of course, 
I, I'm stealing this from Aaron Chikatilov. He's talking about some of the, the gnarly spin serves that we've seen this weekend, and Whitehead certainly has one of them. Uh, left foot. Point. Interesting, a left foot fault here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I didn't even see it. I kind of was like, Courtney, what are you talking about? Never question Courtney Johnson. I have learned my lesson. Four, zero. Yeah, and again, just Whitehead just at the net, just Wagey back and forth, back and forth. And again, Wagey did it a phenomenal job. He got so many of these shots back. But just look how calm Whitehead is over there while Wagey is ex belling so much energy. <laughs> Whitehead a little unsure what the score was. Don't see too many serving faults in singles <laughs> as it's fairly easy to know which side of the court you need to be standing on. Right side for even, left side for odd. But uh, I've seen it before. It's happened. Oh, nice hands from Wagey. Nicely done here up at the net. That one a little tough to get to. Too good there. And Whitehead making very few errors right now in this match. Good return there from Wagey. Yeah, he looks back wondering if that was maybe going out. I do think that was for sure dropping in, so I think that was the right decision to play that ball. But again, just got to be able to hit the shots and Weiji struggling just a tiny bit with that right now. Time We're going to have a timeout. It's tough to sort of wonder what, if anything, is a good strategy change for Weiji. In singles, it, it's a little tougher to make any sort of drastic changes not like in doubles where you can switch up your stack, put your partner on the opposite side of the court than they have been. You can play the slow game if you've been speeding it up too much. Try and be more aggressive. In singles, it's a little bit more limited, I think, how much you can change about the way you're playing or try to change the way your opponent is playing. You can certainly try and get up to the net more try and slow things down with a little more cat and mouse. I think really mostly you can mix up where you're returning the serve, where in the court you're returning it, try and cut down some angles. Generally you'll see at the pro level in singles they'll return down the line, but right now Wagey is returning right down the middle right back to Whitehead, which I think certainly should be something that he changes. Yeah, he's just going right back to him. And again, he's got that spin serve to deal with, so it's a little bit harder to return in a specific spot when you're just trying to return it at all. Just wide there. So that might be a factor in that Wagey is simply trying to return Whitehead's spin serve, and get it in the court. Some success here for Wages getting three eight. There's something going here. All right, kicking point. up that serve a notch, getting a free point off the return. Four eight. Wagey doesn't have a spin serve, but he does have a very hard good pickup. Yeah, I would have liked to see Wagey come to the net on the previous ball. It was a nice drop shot that Whitehead had to let drop. Maybe apply a little bit more pressure. 
Yeah, that was a beautiful return from Weiji. But again, yeah, Whitehead, I think just, just playing a little bit better, Nine, getting some better shots and better opportunities. Great shot. Going to be a match point here for Garrett Whitehead. And he will get it off of his serve with the return long, but really nicely played from Josiah Wagey. Such a great guy, such a great player. Love watching him out here, but Garrett Whitehead just at a higher level here in this matchup. Oh my gosh, Wagey just jumped the back fence. <laughs> I mean, look at this kid. Look at this kid. <laughs> Yeehaw, indeed. We did. We did. We'll take a short break. We're back into the action here for our final day at Next Gen Dallas right after this.
Welcome back to David versus Goliath. I'm sort of joking, but absolutely not. On the far end, Carson Lohr, 12 years old, out of Durham, North Carolina. Have seen him at Next Gen before. Really fantastic kid, fantastic player. He takes on Austin Chikatilov at 6'5". I'm pretty sure his legs go up to Carson's shoulders. 23 years old, out of Fernandina Beach, Florida. Chikatilov, the number two seed here today. Lohr, the number 18, though, out of... You know, out of 40 players, the number 18 seed, not too shabby. Carson Lohr has taken a game off of Jack Foster at a next-gen event. Really great player, have seen, seen him develop here. And we have such a large bracket. I misspoke. That was not a quarterfinal match earlier. It was the quarterfinals of the top half of the bracket. This is a quarterfinal of the bottom half of the bracket. Oh, tough break there. Oh, great get there from... Lore, oh, wonderful angle. Oh, nice pickup. Oh, look at him just work the Amazon man around. Zero, three. I mean, I, I have to imagine the entire crowd watching is cheering for Carson here. <laughs> Again, look at the recognition to come up and take that volley, and he smoked that shot. Again, 12 years old, everybody, 12. Side out. Three, two. Oh, come on with that two-handed backhand. Let's go. I mean, 12 years old is what? Seventh grade? Side out. I, think, I want to say seventh grade he's probably in. Three, two. Oh, Separate there. Chikatilov is currently in school to be a chiropractor. He is a big Yogi. Side His out. nickname, the Amazon Man, partly due to his height, which is 6'5", partly due to his love of Two, nature, four. sort of being in tune with all of that. Very health conscious. Side out. Great pick up. Oh. Boy. Good effort there from Lore. Trying to work those angles. Again, he, he's Five, a little bit smaller, so has to hit shots a little bit differently. Oh, doubles up. Look at these pickups. Look at these pickups. Oh, well Boy. done. I mean, Chikatilov did a great job. I think he had to switch his paddle hand. I mean, look at this angle. Oh, previous Six, shot. I mean, Laura's making him work for it, Side no out. doubt. Two, six. Too much there. Laura's got to be able to get those shots either past Chikatilov, which is a tall order given his wingspan, or he's got to drop them a little bit closer to the net. Great get. 
Good Oi. fake out there from Chikatilov there. I'll tell you right now, Carson Lohr could crush me in singles. Absolutely destroy me. <laughs> Without question. Seven, two. Great Boy. effort from Lore. Got a couple nice shots back. Handling some of these quicker Eight, shots three. from Chikatilan with a little bit more pace. Just giving them right back. What a great drop. Out. I mean, that last shot, not quite as great, obviously, but we're hitting some hey, really hey. nice shots. Point. Again, right placement. Tried to go cross court with that block, which is the right thing Nine, to do, two. the right shot to look for. Just overdoes it a little bit. Oh, tough. Oh, Nine goes out. wide. Lucky break for Lore there. Oh, that one looked like it might have missed. Two, nine. Great Three. spot. I mean, look at this. Look at these drives. Three, nine. Ugh, this is why I love Next Gen so much. Like, look at the talent. Three. Two, gets him on two. I mean, the work Four, that nine. Carson has put into his game since the first time I saw him at a handful of next gens ago is so evident. It's so, look at that effort. What a get. Great pickup. Fortunately, that much effort to pick up a ball usually means you're going to be popping it up. Easy put away there for Chikatilov. Nine, four. That's the thing, too. Lore is playing well enough that he's forcing some errors here from Chikatilov. Four, he's trying nine. to keep it away from him. He knows he's getting to so many of these shots. He's got to hit them very precise. Side out. Nine, four. Tough. Point. Good effort, though, from Lore. He is going to give everything he's got Nine on the court, no question. Ten we got a timeout from Lore here. Going to have a game point from Chicka to Love. Well, he just needs, just needs a drink, needs a little cool off here. Brian Hickman's going to help him out over there. As I mentioned in our head pickleball pregame show, Austin Shikatilov is at the top of the leaderboard currently here for Next Gen Dallas after his first place finish yesterday in men's doubles and a high placed finished finish in mixed as well on Friday with Riley Bonert. So he is looking to secure that number one finish. Game point. Oh, he's there. Great effort, great anticipation. But ultimately, Chikatilov is able to come out on top. We'll switch ends. Back for another fun-filled second game here in this men's single match at Next Gen Dallas right after this.
Welcome back, everyone. We have our youngest participant here this weekend on court, 12-year-old Carson Lohr there on the near end. He takes on 23-year-old Austin Chikatilov on the far end. Absolutely made Austin work for his win in game one. Zero, zero. Spot down that sideline. One, zero. I think Chikatilov knows he maybe needs to take it up a notch here in the second game, not give Lore the opportunities he perhaps let him have Two, in zero. game one. Point. And if anyone is just joining, Next Gen Three, is zero. just open brackets each day simply done by age Point. currently. Next year there may be some tweaks to how the next gen format is, but currently it's Four, an open zero. skill bracket. You do have to have a minimum 4.0 UTPR in one of the categories. Start well up. done there from Lore. Either mixed, doubles, or singles. Zero. So Four. if any of your ratings in those three categories is a 4.0, you are Point. eligible. Look at that. Look at that. Are you serious with that shot from Lore? Like... What? One, four. Come on. That's a pro-level shot right there. J.W. Johnson wishes he could hit that shot. <laughs> I mean, I'm also just joking. Obviously, J.W. Johnson four. can't hit that shot. <laughs> Side out. I mean, again, at 12 years old, the recognition the ability Four, to see two. the court place these shots where Carson is placing them is phenomenal. Look at that. Are we serious? Like, who cares how old the kid is? He can play two, so four. well. So well. Age is just a number, everybody. I mean, great pickup. Side out. Four, two. Oh, just Point. missing the backhand ATP. Five, two. Oh, so close. Point. Yeah, just a couple of shots, right idea, but he's overdoing it just a little bit. Again, Six, probably two. has to put a little bit more effort into hitting these shots as Point. hard as he wants to. And, of course, he's a little bit lower on the net, so he's got to make sure he can be tough on two. some of them, coming from a bit of a lower position to keep some of these shots in. Point. Timeout receiver. Eight, two, one minute. All right, we're going to have a timeout here from Carson Lohr. As Chikatilov pulling away here again in this second game. Again, Austin is the number two seed here today. I imagine Jack Foster is the number one seed. But Austin is the one at the top of the leaderboard here for the men at Next Gen. Fifteen seconds, gentlemen. Receiver, you have one remaining timeout. Server, you still have two. Time in, gentlemen. Eight, two. Great gets, great effort. Again, Lore is 
making Chikatilov hit one more shot multiple times. I mean, ultimately, match going to Chikatilov here, but such a great job from Carson. Really well played. And he's not done yet. This is just his first loss of the day, so he's still in it here. He'll drop to our back draw in a pretty deep field of gentlemen. We have 43 here this weekend, so quite a big bracket to play for them. Our ladies a little bit smaller, so they're working their way through much quicker. But we'll have some of those ladies' matches still to come on center court here. We will have a short break. Don't go anywhere, though. More singles action as we conclude our weekend here at Chicken and Pickle Dallas right after this.
Welcome back, everyone, to our next matchup here on center court. We have A.J. Kawaja on the far end in white, 22 years old, out of Fort Worth, Texas. Just graduated from Texas Christian University, as you can see on his shirt. Have a couple pickleball players here this weekend for Next Gen that are currently attending TCU or have. He takes on Spencer Lanier, who is our number three seed. Spencer 19 years old out of Newburgh, Oregon, currently at Portland Community College. But he is in the drilling group and playing group with Wes Gabrielson, Eric Lang, Jason Bach, a couple of those other guys up in the Pacific Northwest. They are singing his praises big time. Got to see him play in some doubles earlier in the weekend. He is also 6'5", just so everybody knows. We have two 6'5 gentlemen here this weekend, which is wild. Every time I had to interview them, it hurt my neck. Zero, zero. Point. Lanier, of course, has that very long reach. Good effort. I stand by my observation. When I saw him play earlier, he very much gives me J.W. Johnson vibes. He's kind of very mellow seeming, sort of almost slow motion in his movements. Doesn't expel a lot of energy moving around. The court very deliberate in his movements. I mean, even look the way he stands is a little bit like J.W. Johnson. Side out. It's Deej. DJ Young back in the house, everybody. Side out. Be interesting to see what Kawaja's strategy here is. Definitely going to have to cut down on those errors, though, if he wants a shot here at moving on. A little bit of a spin serve out of Lanier. Sort of a simple spin with that left hand. Nothing too crazy. Thought he might have missed that in that back corner. First time we've seen both gentlemen up at the net. Five, zero. Quick hands exchange. Oh, that's going to go out. long. Zero, five. Side out. Oh, Courtney almost got taken out right there from Spencer. Almost got an extra little hug there. 
really great effort. Again, got some long legs, get you places much quicker. Kawaja does seem to be a little hesitant coming to the net or following his return. He's had some really nice ones. Zero, six. Point. A little long on that return from Lanier. Kwaja has sort of adjusted that drive. It looks like he's driving much better now. I think he's stopped trying to cut it so close to the net, give himself a little bit more margin to work with. Seven, one. See, again, Kwaja didn't follow that in too aggressively to the net. His returns haven't been super deep. So that may be where his hesitation is coming from. Point. <laughs> Big serve. Two, seven. Wow. Point. I mean, that was a fantastic angle. Kawaja has driven every single one of his third Seven, shots three. so far. And short return, so he doesn't follow it in. Puts you definitely at a bit of a disadvantage when you have a player that's so tall up at the net. They can do so much with their shots. Turn there from Lanier. Eight, three. Yeah, again, that's a good return. Kawaja does come up with the return, but he's hitting that next shot still several feet behind the kitchen line. I think it three, might serve him well if he if he can get up to that line a little bit quicker sort of establish himself right with some nice solid footing. Eight, three. I mean, that was a great return. But again, I mean, Side out. He, he comes out on top, but again, just So a little bit of confusion about whether that last shot was in. I think Kawaja thought maybe it was out, and then he was calling a timeout, but it was in, and then he kind of didn't want to call a timeout, but he'd already called a timeout. So just a bit, a bit of confusion here. <laughs> an accidental offensive timeout here for Kawaja. I won't continue to harp, but right, I think if Kawaja eight. were to watch this back eight. later, I think he'd see that he missed some opportunities to get up to the net, be a little bit more in control perhaps of some of these rallies.
part of the reason, too, Kawaja might not be following his return in is that Lania's serve is so good and so deep, he's a little bit moving backwards. His weight is perhaps shifting a little back as he's returning. So that's tough. If you hit a shot needing to back up, it's tough to then get your momentum moving forward in a quick enough way that gets you up there. Great job, Kawaja. It's a bit of a pop up here. Does let it bounce, but again, Lanier makes that move to cover left. Anticipates the wrong way. So, Lanier takes game one. Again, we'll see if Kwaja can, can be a little bit more confident in game two to follow his returns up to the net or at least look to be making that move sooner than he is currently and perhaps give himself a bit of a better opportunity here to keep that score a little closer. We'll back into the action here at Chicken and Pickle, Dallas, right after this. Welcome back, everyone. Did I just hear Ivy Cheddar somewhere? <laughs> I heard someone yelling. Oh, nope, Ivy's sitting right next to us. It wasn't her. Oh, some of these ladies, they are fierce competitors out here. Just <laughs> random screams throughout Chicken and Pickle. All right. We need a green light, Mitch. We need a green light. Got it. We got it. We have this awesome new system of lights. You can see it right here, guys, if you're looking at me on camera. It tells the ref when to go, when we're back from the stream. Pickleball TV just coming up with all kinds of fun stuff. All right, I like, I like the move. Kawaja got his butt up to the net, followed that return. Oh. Just missing it, but ripping some of those drives. Two, zero. Mm, just misses. Oh, great pickup. Like I mentioned earlier, all, all players play all three days. So there's a lot of pickleball players that don't normally play singles that are playing singles here today just because of the format of next gen and we want to kind of expose all the players to all the different ways to develop their game. Ooh, that is nice. I have to imagine uh, Kawaja does play singles. He definitely seems smart enough in the strategy that he is a singles player in pickleball. Maybe not his main focus, but I think probably, you know, the top 20 or so seated gentlemen here today 
are actually singles player, but a little bit lower. Seeds might not generally play singles, so not as comfortable with the strategy of singles or so working Three, one. that strategy. Well done. Well done. Again, I mean, it's the, the lofting serve. Followed it in again. It's even when he does make a move to the net, it's not. Again, that was a nice calculated sort of step forward. I like that. Very smart. It's over. Top. I need some really great gets there from Kawaja. Really nicely done. But when, once your opponent is able to get you on the move as much as Lanier did, you might be able to get a couple shots back, but usually they're not going to be really well hit shots. Oh. That is a beauty right there. I mean, that's beautiful. I mean, Kawaja needs to rock some more of those passing shots if he is going to stay back, knock it up to the net. Those are going to be key here if he wants a shot at pushing this to three. <laughs> Odoth, you make me laugh. Kawaja, all right, little momentum here. I do think he's done a much better job here in the second game, being a little bit more aggressive, getting to the kitchen a few more times than we saw in game one. And again, most of these players at the next-gen events have never played each other. These are not the pros that travel all over the country. They see a lot of the same players. A lot of these players stick kind of their to their local area. Maybe they play some tournaments but they're generally not going to be traveling a ton just because they're younger. Their families have to travel with them. It's a, it's a bit tougher to do than players that can travel on their own and, you know, on their own dime. So a lot of these players have never seen each other. A lot of these first games between some of these players are completely a feeling out process. So Kawaja maybe took game one as a bit of a, a, a learning experience, and he's made some adjustments here in this second game. I think. Ooh. Side out. Yeah, just a really nice drop volley there. Four, six. Is the in call. Oh, yeah, caught that line. That was a nice top spin shot there from Kawaja. Yeah, he, he's really, the confidence is showing here. The change is noticeable in the shots that he's hitting here in the second game. Let that get behind him a little bit. Five, seven. Point. 
haven't seen too many of those errors from Kawaja here in the second game. Did see handful in game one. Definitely led to a lot of three points. And Lanier is also missing quite a few of his serves this second game. Oh boy. Side out. Just a little bit too underneath that one. Six, seven. Oop. Point. Seven, seven. Oh, unlucky. Point. A timeout Score here. Eight, seven. One Ball clips the net, keeps it even closer to the net, gives it a little bit more angle, so Kawaja just does not have a shot at that. And we're going to have a timeout as Lanier retakes a one point lead. My first time getting to see Spencer Lanier player this weekend. And he, I don't know who it is, but he reminds me of someone so much. Like he looks like somebody I know or that's famous. I can't place it. Can't place it, but it's just in my brain that he looks so familiar to me. Just thought I'd share that with everyone. Just a little, little personal tidbit about what's going on with me. <laughs> Hope everyone is having a lovely Sunday morning wherever you're at. Thank you for joining us for some fabulous next-gen action and some new faces. Mm. Again, tough. Kawaja was struggling a little bit with the serve in game one. He has handled it very nicely here in the second game, and now the wheels are just falling off. Match point here for Lanier. Oh, all right. Seven, ten. Oh, again, nice pickups, but such a great job from Lanier with that drop volley. Can be absolutely so good of a shot in singles. Works. Much better usually than doubles. Is that it, Nicholas? Is it that Spencer looks like Andre Deescu? It might be. Is that it? That might be it. Yeah. Kawaja totally on the run, on the move there. Not going to get a good paddle on that. Another match point. Oh, Side such out. a smart. Oh, I thought I thought he got it. My mistake. Again, doubling up. Seven, oh, just missed it. It was a smart placement. Just barely missed it. Great drop. Oh, so good. Lanier Side just out. waiting for his moment. He finally gets that drop shot opportunity. Follows it immediately up to the net and then takes over control. Ten, seven. Again, there's the drop. Comes up to the net, little hands exchange. Oh, really nice job from Kawaja, but now he's on the defense, had to back all the way up. Going to be so much tougher for him, and that is what is going to ultimately get Spencer Lanier over the hump here in game two to take this match. Really well played. Kawaja, incredibly better effort here in game two. Really made some great adjustments coming out of game one. He's still alive in that back draw, and we will take a short break and back into our last day of singles, men's and women's. Rocking right now here at Chicken and Pickle. We're back into it right after this.
Welcome back, everyone, to our actual first quarterfinal matchup here in men's singles. As I mentioned earlier, a very large group of gentlemen playing singles here today, so it's taken a while to get into our quarterfinals. But we do indeed have them on deck here. Garrett Whitehead will be on the near end. He takes on Jaden Broderick, who we have not seen yet on center court this weekend, but got to meet him in San Antonio, which was our last Next Gen event. Also, stupid tall. Kid is stupid tall. I want to say he's, ah, is he 6'5", too? There's no way we have three 6'5", guys. 6'4", I'll ask him. Jaden, how tall are you? 6'4", just a little baby. A little baby 6'4", everyone. <laughs> Uh, Jaden Broderick, 16 years old, junior in high school out of Greenville, South Carolina. See him around uh, the APP circuit as well. Always good to see these next-gen players out in the real world at some of our bigger tournaments. But we have seen Garrett Whitehead already today, 17 years old, a senior in high school out of Draper, Utah. Side out. And Broderick's going to have that length and reach, as we have seen with some of our taller players. Zero, zero. Side out. Bob Swisshelm back in action as our USA Pickleball certified referee. Zero, zero. Side out. Just wide. Have to give another quick shout out. When I saw Jaden playing in Next Gen at our previous zero, zero. event, he was actually partnered with Jace Lanier, who
who is out of Michigan, fellow Michigander, was super impressed with both of them. Chase is just 14 years old. I believe he was 13 when I saw him. Might actually still be 13. I don't know when his birthday was. But super impressive. Just the nicest kid. Every single player here at these Next Gen. Just so awesome to meet. Everyone is great. Not going to name names, but some of, some of the pros around the circuit, you know, they got some egos, they got some attitudes. They're not no, always necessarily fun to deal with, but these next-gen players love it. Love them all. Oh, great spot from Whitehead there, making it a little difficult. When you are as tall as Jaden, it can be a little tough to get low, pick up some of those shots. Oh, yes. The, the serve, the serve is out in force here. Two, zero. Point. Two quick free points. Three, zero. Oh my gosh, my Elodie mac and cheese has been delivered by Chris. Point. Without a fork, though, so I'm going to have to dock him some points. Oh, he's getting me a fork. Oh, never mind. I take extra points. Uh, just wide there from Whitehead. Zero, four. Whitehead doing a great job pinning Broderick back at that baseline, not letting him get up. Whitehead knows if Broderick's able to get up there, again, he's got a little bit more reach, a little bit more height than he does. Makes him very dangerous up at the net. Oh, that one goes wide off the net. Five, zero. Point. Right, half of his points now. Six, Three zero. points off the serve. Side out. Massive put away there from Broderick. I did Oda. Side out. Mitch, are we able to turn this camera around, get a shot of my Elodi mac and cheese for the people while it's untouched and looking gorgeous? Oh, jeez. I don't want to burn myself on the skillet. I almost did that before. Look at look at this, guys. Look at this beautiful skillet of Elodi mac and cheese here at Chicken and Pickle. It's my new favorite thing in the whole world. If you go to a Chicken and Pickle and haven't had it, mm, oh, my gosh, it's so good. No one tell me how many calories... It would ruin my day, but mm, worth it, worth it. I may have had it three times this weekend. No one's counting, though. No one's counting. Nobody asked you. Back into the action from the timeout. Point. One, oh, jeez. Oh, that kid smacked himself early. Is that the same kid? Point. So there is a player here that was behind Three, me one time, got really frustrated and smacked his paddle on his, I assume, his thigh, like you see some people do. It literally scared me so bad. It was so loud. Oh, it just happened again. I don't like f physical punishment of yourself. All right, people. Big announcement earlier this weekend, but the 2023 Next Gen stops are out. Joshua, I saw you. If you're planning on joining us, hopefully next year, these are our three stops. Put them on your calendar. Put them in the back of your mind. We start off in February, San Antonio, Texas. 
July, middle of summer, Overland Park, Kansas, and we will conclude Next Gen back in Texas in Grapevine. Two new locations for Chicken and Pickleball that we have not been at yet. So it's going to be a super fun year next year with all of our regular tour stops and also those Next Gen. Side out. <laughs> Odoth, don't tell me what Six, to do. Three. Again, yeah, Broderick is much more dangerous if Whitehead allows him to get up to that net. Three, six. Side out. Just missing here on that two-handed backhand drive. Six, three. Again, you may have noticed Broderick is a lefty doesn't change things all that much in the singles game, but certainly in doubles when you have a lefty playing, you're going to generally stack them on that right side and put two forehands in the middle. Great job, Broderick, keeping Whitehead pinned at that baseline. Great. Oh, great hands, great hands. Wow, nice Point. hands exchange there. I, Whitehead got two more than I was expecting him to. That last one just a little awkwardly placed. Four, seven. Oh, oh. Side out. he's on the ground. He's all right, though. It's a little slippery over there. Hello, Miss Ivy. Four, seven. Point. Got it. I saw it in. All right. Whitehead asking Bob, did he see that? Wasn't quite sure about the call. Looks like it caught that Five, line. Seven. Roderick was savage here. I mean, that little wrist flick, a little Five, seven. angle back cross court. So well done. Side out. Just clips the net as that sails over. Might have pushed it just a touch wide. Oh, uh, yeah, I think if he had just cleared the net, that would have been a really nice drop. Point. All right, so while Whitehead came out pretty hot, was up 4 or 5-0 to start this first game. Broderick has made those adjustments, gotten back in here, handling the serve a little bit better than he was. Seven, eight. And he is looking to tie this up. Oh, that drive was Point. massive. Again, some eight, of the eight, power that these young players have is just so impressive. 
We got anything else to talk about, Mitch? You want to throw anything else up? It's Mike. <laughs> Ooh, Houston. Yes, yeah, speaking of Texas, while we're still here, everyone, in just three weeks, we are going to be in Houston for the first time, October 19th through the 23rd. Registration is still open. Not for too much longer, though, is a golden ticket opportunity for the 2023 Nationals. It's going to be an awesome tournament, awesome time. A lot of pros there. Come out and watch. Come out and play. Get on pickleballtournaments.com. Look at what tournaments we have open for registration. Houston included. Come join us. I mean, not surprising in pickleball at all, but it is now Jaden Broderick with a game point here after Garrett Whitehead seemed to be in control in this first game. Very close. I expect a close second game as well. We'll take a short break, and we're back into the action right after this. Back into the action here for game two in our first quarterfinal match here for our men's singles on the near end. 16-year-old Jaden Broderick. On the far end, 17-year-old Garrett Whitehead. Fifth and fourth seed, respectively. Whitehead came out with a big lead in game one. I believe he was up 5-0 at one point, but Broderick made the adjustments he needed to. And some lucky breaks like that do not hurt at all. Great hands from Whitehead. Oh my, the hands, oh my gosh. He's so disappointed that he doesn't come out on top of this. But the fact he even got a paddle on those is so impressive. I can't believe that. He has such deceptively quick hands. Oh, that's just too good. Broderick looks like he is really settled in here. He's playing very confidently. He's hitting his shots now. 4-0. Yeah, bit of a miss hit, I think, there from Whitehead. But he did try and take some pace off of this shot here. Made it really tough for Broderick to get there. Mm, he's got to get those serves in. With Broderick up 4-0 here in the second game, Whitehead cannot waste any opportunity. He has to put some points on the board himself. Five, 
Chris, if you like Adam Stone's new podcast, you'd probably love listening to him on my podcast as well. He was my latest episode. Feel free to check it out if you didn't. Did you guys even know I have a podcast? Pickleball After Dark is its name. Good times. All right, time out here from Garrett Whitehead as he is trailing 6-0 here in this second game. And after Broderick was able to overtake him in game one, Whitehead in trouble here possibly get knocked down into our consolation bracket again broderick 16 years old but 6-4 i remember i asked him at a previous next gen how tall his parents were and i think his dad's even taller so i don't even know if he's done growing which is wild What is a little tough about watching some of these players in next gen is because they're so young, because they don't have nearly as much experience just in general at high level sports, in a lot of tournaments, certainly they may play something in high school or, you know, growing up, but the, the pressure isn't quite the same. So I think every once in a while seeing some of these young players definitely can get a little down on themselves, get a little frustrated, can be tough to kind of shake off some, some tough breaks. But for the most part, these kids handle themselves so well. Much better than some pros that I could name, which I won't. <laughs> spot there again whitehead just such quick hands we've seen it all weekend from him again just great anticipation oh too good too good well done <laughs> garrett just breathed a big sigh of relief here actually coming out on top here oh so well done way to stay on top of it Ooh, the serve that's what Whitehead has been looking for and has not got here at all in this second game. One, Broderick has had the serve more often, and then Garrett has not capitalized a couple times that he has had the serve. And this is our second to last next gen stop of 2022. We're here in Dallas, Texas, of course. But we conclude our Next Gen series this year in Kansas City. Registration is still open for just maybe a few more days, maybe a week. I'm not sure. Might be longer than I might be making that up. The 11th? I think the 10th? Yeah, of October, right? So I think registration is closing in the near future. But if you have a young player, if you're thinking about Next Gen, come join us in the middle of November. It'll be awesome. We're going to the Chicken and Pickle in Kansas City. Come join us. It's fun, I promise. Side out. Six, four. Good. Quick side out coming out of the timeout. Oh, and a point. three point on the other side of it. Seven, four. Jaden, I don't believe, is spinning the ball at all. He just has a good hard serve. Whitehead normally is extremely good about getting up to the net, trying to close ground as often as he can. He's kind of moving that right leg around. Saw him kind of swinging, flexing out his hip. I'm wondering if he's perhaps tweaked something a little or feeling a little stiff in that right hip area. 
Timeout receiver, 9-4, one minute. We're gonna have a timeout. Here, I believe the second and final one for this second game. Jada Broderick, two points away from heading to the semifinals. You can follow along in our brackets on pickleballtournaments.com. As I mentioned, this is our first quarterfinal. It's quite a big bracket. So it looks like into another quarterfinal is Austin Chikatilov. Spencer Lanier will take on Ursilio Cabiasis in another quarterfinal. Yeah, and there's Whitehead stretching out that hip a little bit. Oh, that, that's not. Oh, it is. He, he's finishing. Even though there is still one point left to go, Whitehead is pulling out. That's, oh, I feel so bad. He definitely has tweaked something. Um, I don't know if he's even going to keep playing, but, oh, such a great player. Just fantastic job all weekend. Can't wait to see where he goes in his pickleball career. But it looks like he has sort of hurt himself enough that he doesn't want to aggravate it anymore. So that's tough. I feel bad. Um, so Jaden Broderick, I, I think, was going to make it into the semi regardless based on just how this second game was playing out. But tough way to end. And coming up next here on court, we'll have another quarterfinal match. Jack Foster is going to take on Nick Garza. Coming up next, so don't go anywhere. Back into the action while I chow down my aloti mac and cheese <laughs> during the break. I need some time, guys. It, it takes a minute. I want to savor it. But we're back here at Chicken and Pickle Dallas right after this. We are launching Selkirk TV, which brings the best pickleball content to your smartphone, tablet, and big screen TV. This is 24-7 Pickleball, proudly brought to you by Selkirk.
Welcome back, everyone, for our second semifinal. Ugh. It's Sunday. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Our second quarterfinal match here in men's singles. On the far end, we have Nick Garza, 23, out of San Diego, California. He takes on Jack Foster, the number one seed on the near end, 21 years old, out of Vero Beach, Florida. And I am joined once again by senior pro specialist Paul Olin. Hello, sir. Senior pro specialist. Yeah, you're a specialist, specialist at being a senior pro. I mean. It's taken 50 plus years. <laughs> you're making it look easy, though, Paul. Just <laughs> effortless. <laughs> so you are a singles player, so you have to sort of appreciate being able to watch some of these young players and how, I mean, how talented some of them are at just such a young age. Lots of talent. Lots of youth. I wish I had their court coverage. Yeah. And their recovery. <laughs> they can keep going all day long. Just wide there. Jack Foster, of course, is pretty well known for being a single specialist on the pro scene. Doesn't always hit the podium, though. You know, some mixed results still for him as he's working on his game. But this is certainly probably the day he's going to feel most comfortable. I don't think uh, Jack and Nick have ever played. I can't imagine that they have. A, a lot of players mentioned earlier, a lot of players facing each other for the first time here this weekend. So they're both feeling each other out, so to speak, at this point. And uh, Nick, having watched him play a few times earlier in the week, he's got some great cross-court passing shots off of both sides. Yep. Some great angles. And Jack, as we all know, has a phenomenal forehand. Yep, got that. Windmill drive working. One, two. Point. Yeah, we talk a lot when we watch Jack play singles specifically that because of his sort of unique style of play and he doesn't come from that racket sport background, it makes him a little tougher to read because his strokes are a little more unorthodox. Hides kind of where he's going to go with some of them. Do you think that's generally he, true? Yes. I mean, his, his forehand, as I already mentioned, is great. And uh, he does a really nice job of running around and, and hitting that forehand from all positions on the court. And he can, you know, go inside in or inside out. And that big loopy stroke allows him, you know, essentially it's he's kind of holding his stroke off to hit it. So, he, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of disguise in that. Very athletic, can cover the court, and is comfortable in the cat and mouse game too. Um, so, you know, he's got a really good game for Nick to be successful. You know, he, he needs to get to Jack's backhand. Yep. And that's, you know, easier said than done. Great spot. In the singles game at the pro and sort of senior pro level, generally I feel like we see a, a pattern of when you're returning a serve, generally it's up the line. That seems to be kind of the, the, the preferred place to go to kind of cut off some of the other angles. What would be the reason to return to the middle on a return of serve? Somebody that has really good angles. Mm -hmm. So if they're able to hit a really good cross-court backhand or forehand. I may sometimes try to go more towards the middle. Um, but that's dangerous against somebody like Jack because he can, as I just mentioned, hit that forehand inside in or inside out. So you're, you're giving him that forehand by going to the middle of the court. We saw yesterday and on Friday watching Nick Garza play that he does occasionally get caught a little in that transition zone. He, yep. he kind of finds himself in between staying back at that baseline, getting up to the kitchen line, and it's put him in some tough spots sometimes, and I'm seeing sort of that pattern play out here as well. That's a nice shot by Jack. Yep, absolutely. He, uh, 
you know, he did a good job of coming in, but then didn't, you know, just didn't complete it. And that gives, that takes the pressure off of Jack. Um, it gives Jack a lot more options and angles if you don't close off the court. Yeah. Of course, is a feeling out process, so we'll see if Garza kind of can make any of those adjustments here in game one or if it will be left mainly for game two. But, uh, yeah, I think like you mentioned, I, I don't think he's kind of recognized yet that he should be targeting that backhand as frequently it. as yeah, possible. He, he, he's just having he trouble it, executing it yet. Right. All right. And so I think, you know, in a lot of these cases you have to go to the strength. You have to go to, to Jack's forehand to get to his backhand. Yeah. And then if you can survive that first attack from Jack, then your chances of success go up. But Jack's doing a great job. A couple nice passing shots down the line. Um, it's difficult. Another great shot. And he just gets so much power on those forehands, too. Yeah, I mean, Foster sometimes, he knows it, he'll admit it. He's a bit of a streaky player sometimes. He can be very hot. Sometimes he's off, you know. He can get in his head a little bit sometimes. But he's playing very confidently right now. Absolutely. He's hitting every shot he wants to. This is a Jack Foster that's on right now. Yep. Great. Mixed up his serve, so just gave him a different look on the serve. Uh, handled a nice deep return very well. He's on his game right now. Nice volley. Yeah, I think Garza is going to have success if he can keep Foster on the move. And while Foster is really good at that, I think that at least gives him a, a little bit better chance of success. Oh, nice hands on both sides. Nick Closed off the court, too. You know, he closed in on this shot here. Kept the pressure on Jack. And because of kind of Jack's style, he doesn't necessarily have that wrist flick shot that a lot of players do. So from that spot, he can't necessarily go back really angled cross court because that's not the way he holds his paddle. So that does make it a little bit easier maybe for Garza to know he doesn't have to cover that really sharp angle because Foster's not generally going to go for that shot. Correct. That was another good uh, rolling forehand passing shot cross court. A little bit of a run here. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, he can anticipate that Jack is primarily going to come back down the line on his backhand volley, especially if the ball's down. I imagine we might see a timeout from Foster if Garza is able to put another point on the board. Ooh. Side out. It's a great return by Jack there. Getting to Nick's back end. Nine, five. Side out. That was a great approach by Nick. And he was stood the attack, and that just that point right there just showed Jack's mobility to get around to hit another forehand. Um, didn't execute it, but it was incredible footwork to get there. So here is the timeout. And we've talked a little bit about some upcoming tournaments, but the final tournament of 2022 to conclude our year is going to be back at Legacy Bill Bank Park in Mesa, Arizona. Paul, are you coming? I am. Yes, Paul Owen will be there, everybody. I haven't gotten my ticket yet, though. You'll, so get, you'll get time. You'll get time. It's, it's still open. Registration is open now on pickleballtournaments.com. Come, you know, escape the winter if you're in a cold place. Come join us in Mesa, Arizona. Gorgeous venue there, over 40 dedicated courts. Is that one of, like, the best venues you've been to? It's huge. It's humongous. And to it have is. all dedicated courts and, like, individually fenced off, it's such a great place. Excited to be going back. And it's it, a dry heat, right? Yeah. 
Exactly. That's what they say. <laughs> like you're you gonna sweat. It, right? You're you gonna just... sweat, but it's a dry sweat, you Paul. <laughs> Set out there, and again, that Mesa is our final tournament of 2022. 20, so but it's not our it's not our season ender. That is in Boca in January, which is kind of our championship Masters tournament, which will be super fun. Excited for that as well. Nice serve. Whew. Nice serve by Nick, right into the body. Kept Jack back just a little bit, and allowed him to get that opening down the line. Great volley, great volley. Great spot. But definitely close the gap a little here. We talked about, you know, this is probably the first time they've played each other, so Garza has done a really nice job making some of those in-game adjustments here. Not letting Foster just steamroll him here. But Foster did get, get out in front, and he has managed to stay there. He's got himself a game point. Ooh, and he'll get it with that cross-court drop. So Jack Foster, one game closer to heading to the semis. We'll take a short break back into the action here in this men's singles quarterfinal match at Chicken and Pickle, Next Gen Dallas, right after this. Welcome back, everyone. I'll just cut you off right there, Paul. <laughs> just cut you off right there. Courtney Johnson getting ready to get us back into game two. On the far end now, we have Jack Foster taking on Nick Garza on the near end. It's the first time I have got to see Nick Garza play this weekend. Very impressed with him. Have any people sort of stood out to you, Paul, as some standout up-and-coming players? Austin, I can't yep. begin to pronounce it. Chikatilov. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, huge individual. Um, I'm just really impressed with his on-court demeanor. Yeah. His decision-making and uh, his patience. Yeah. I mean, he, he was a great partner, a great player, and just uh, I'm very impressed. Nice spot in that back corner. Yeah, we'll see if Garza took some of those adjustments he made in game one and can roll them over into game two here. And I think uh, he, he's going to need to get more on his backhand return. It seems, seems like Jack is kind of targeting his backhand. Um, and I wouldn't say his Nick's backhand is a weakness by any stretch, but he just needs to get more on that return. Yeah. Um, not I mean, necessarily more play, not necessarily more pace, just better placement. Yeah. He's kind of leaving it up and giving Jack a good look at third shots. It's great right. footwork. Beautiful. Yeah, we, we talk all the time. I mean, in singles specifically, the serve and return are critical. 
yep. to how it's going to play out and how you're going to do. Oh, yeah, that was a nice return. So Foster clarifying that that ball went long, not wide. So Garza thinking that might have hit the line, but. Nice volley. Just stuck that down the line. I mean, some other great names that I'd never seen before. You know, Spencer Lanier. I mean, yeah. 6'5". Incredible touch. Nice soft game to go with the power. Side out. Great return. By Jack. Zero, three. You have one minute. All right, Foster's going to take an offensive timeout here. He is down 3-0. And again, you know, three, not even remotely. And a number that cannot be overtaken easily, especially in singles when things can shift so quickly. I like the timeout. Um, yeah. You know, I think he just wants to get his head back in the game. He's mm -hmm. got a small deficit here nothing large but he's got the ball it's on his serve now you know for him hopefully he gets a good good run right here you know what i really appreciate about jack foster is he will admit himself that he does struggle sometimes with sort of the mental aspect he can get in his head he can get down on himself and so even being able to recognize that he has become really good about taking timeouts when he knows he needs them he used to be not great about it he would just kind of like power through, be really like stubborn, not calling him, but he is much better about that. And I think it's serving him very well. He's, he's gotten a handle a little bit on not letting himself spiral like he used to. I'm just, I don't. So Garza has a nice shot here, but look how far back he is. Yep. And he even made a move backwards. He backed off. If he had stayed on the line and just simply moved laterally, he could have taken that out of the air. Okay. Point. This has turned out to be a great timeout for, for Jack. He's imposing his will now on the game and, and getting back to what he likes to do. We talk sometimes, especially in singles, about one of the players controlling the rally. When we say that, what does that mean? Like, how is one player in control versus the other? I like to use the word, um, you know, you're dictating the point. Sure. Same, you know, same thing as controlling. But, uh, you know, you're the player that's moving the other player around. Uh, in singles, if it's a baseline rally, it's the player that's a little bit more up in the court. Uh, you know, it's more like a tennis match, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, Andre Agus used to be great at that. He's inside the baseline, sure. hitting his ground strokes. I think. Gen do you think generally in singles we would say if one player is at the kitchen and the other is back the person at the net is the one dictating or is that i, I would say that person the has the advantage okay i don't know if they're it, it depends you know because there's some players that are great counter punchers sure and they don't want to dictate necessarily uh, but Ugh. that was a great shot that's the problem if you're going to go cross court you're just opening up a world of angles mm -hmm. um, and it becomes much more difficult to control so that goes back to your point earlier about approaching down the line it just it, it's more often than not, you can control the angles. So I think timeout good timeout. Is Nick is pressing now with that yep. with that passing shot, um, with that backhand cross court. He's just going for too much. He needs to get back to his game, and uh, you know he's he's trying to go for lines now, and for sure, making a little bit more on post errors but that's due to jack putting more pressure on him yeah absolutely and we talked about our next gen 2023 schedule but our entire schedule for next year is out for the app tour i mentioned that boca raton florida tournament in january is our season ender masters tournament however we kick off in punta gorda florida the week before so a little funky with how the schedule works out but 
We are in Florida several times throughout the year, but we have some amazing venues throughout the year. That schedule is found on our website or social media. I highly recommend you go check it out, see where we're at during the year maybe we're close to you maybe we're not too far away maybe it's a new city you've wanted to visit and haven't been able to but a lot of amazing venues and opportunities next year to join us on the app tour it's going to be a fabulous year of pickleball i'm very excited paul olin will be rocking out senior pro of course where are you at on the standings list right now paul i am number three all right not bad not shabby I think, is it Witzkin and Matias? Mercha. Mercha. Yep, Witzkin just overtook Mercha. All right. All right, well, yeah, let's get number two. one, Paul, number one in 2023. <laughs> Long road. Again, Nick is getting caught in the midcourt. Right, he started really strongly here, but again, that's the momentum. We see it shift so quickly, especially in singles. And Foster has definitely snatched that back. Ooh, just missed that. To your point, though, about controlling the point, I mean, since Jack's timeout, He's mm -hmm. been controlling every single point. He has Nick on his back foot. He has Nick getting caught in no man's land. Um, Jack is imposing his will on the game right now. Yeah, it's just so tough. You, you saw throughout that whole thing. I mean, Garza was up near the kitchen. He comes back a little bit for the next shot and much farther the next one. So if you, especially in singles, are able to push somebody back, I mean, it's kind of the beginning of the end yep. for that rally. And that, that previous rally started off with a, uh, a shallow return by Nick. And Jack was just on top of him that entire point. Conversely, that last point, Nick hit a little bit better of a return. And Garza uses but his second and final timeout. Yep. Yeah. We're going to have a match point for Jack Foster. Coming out of this timeout, we'll see if Garza can stop the bleeding here a little bit or if he will find himself in the back draw going forward. Spot in the semis on the line here for our players. You know, Jack obviously has a lot more singles experience, so I think this is a sure. good, good opportunity for Nick. He's a I think can be a great singles player. He just yeah, absolutely. needs more experience playing some of these higher level players. Winner of this match will take on Jaden Broderick in the semis, who we just saw previously. He's playing great. Yeah, he's, he's playing. He's got a great game and very tall, long. Does a great job of getting low for such a tall player. Mm -hmm. And that will be the match for Jack Foster as he moves to face Jaden Broderick in the semis. But really nicely done from Nick Garza. And like you mentioned, a lot of these players, you know, it's simply a little bit more experience, getting those reps, getting some higher-level play, which is what we're trying to do here at Next Gen is expose these players to maybe some higher level than they've experienced. But he heads to the semis, and our other semi will be set after Spencer Lanier and Ursilio Cabiesis face off in one quarterfinal, and Mike Anderson takes on Austin Chikatilov in the fourth. Winners of both of those will face each other in our second semi as we're working our way through our men's bracket. Of course, our ladies are playing today as well. Much smaller bracket for them, but I believe we'll have a couple more ladies matches before we call it a day here at Chicken and Pickle in Dallas. So don't go anywhere. We're back into the action right after this.
to waste under the sand inside into our wildest dreams. Welcome back, everyone, to our next ladies match here on center court. I probably should have looked up already where we're at in the bracket, but I'll do it real quick because I can multitask. I can talk and do this at the same time. We have Riley Bonert in the blue on the near end, taking on Dylan Champagne on the far end. Oh, I think this is our winner bracket final. This is our winner bracket final. So one of these ladies heads to gold, the other heads to bronze at the conclusion of this match. We have, as I mentioned, Riley Bonert, 17 years old, out of Louisville, Kentucky. And she takes on Dylan Rain Champagne, a.k.a. Rainbow, which is where that name come from. Just asked her to, to clarify. She is 18 years old, out of Riverdale, Utah. She said she used to hate it. Now she loves it. So her middle name is Rain. Her nickname from her family is Rainbow. And now she loves it. Start out. Bob Swisshelm back for referee duties. Lauren McLaughlin here on the mic for our final day of Next Gen Dallas. Point. Dylan is one of the New players to me this weekend have not got to see her play in a previous Next Gen event. So excited to have been introduced to her. She loves doing this paddle toss that I think I've only seen. No, Hayden Patrick one might do it. I know J.W. Johnson and Georgia Johnson do it. Great spot there from Bonart. Two, 
Side out. One, two. Point. <coughs> two, two. Bonert definitely has a little bit more traditional tennis-esque strokes in the way that she plays. Champagne, a little bit unique, really great get there from Bonert cross court here. Watch the slice from Champagne on that backhand. It's definitely a bit of a, a unique shot that you don't see in singles a ton. Some really good gets there from Champagne. I'm a little surprised Boner, especially on that shot, went cross court back to her instead of down the line. She might have been second guessing that. But definitely looks like Champagne is, she really loves that backhand slice. Pretty much any time she gets a backhand, she's going to slice it. So. Might be an advantage on some shots, perhaps a disadvantage on others. We'll just have to see how it plays out. Three, four. Ball. Oh, I, th I thought Bob said fault for a second, and then I realized it was ball. <laughs> Mike Anderson has taken on Austin Chikatilov on the next Three, court four. in their quarterfinal match. Oh. Yeah, Bonart, great placement there. You can see how much Champagne had to extend here to try and even get a paddle on that shot. Tough to get there and then hit a good shot as well. Again, it does seem like uh, Champagne, because she doesn't have those traditional tennis strokes Five, from a four. tennis background, she does hit her shots a, a little flatter. There's not a lot of top spin yeah. on her shots, where Bonart certainly is able to create a little bit more action on some of these balls. Six, four. Backhand slice return. Oh, nice hands. Wow, Side great out. job from Champagne. Just hanging in there. Classic example of what we say all the time is make your opponent hit oh, one more shot. shot. Just kept that ball in play, and eventually Bonert made that error. I like it. She's getting fired up. Seven, 
Really nice spot right down that sideline there from Bonert. That's a great spot there from Champagne, but then on the move, the angle and the drop in the spot from Bonert, that was, that's a pro level shot right there without question. Well done, her dad Chris, giving her some advice here. Chris Bonert, he is a really nice player himself. I got to see him play a little rec. We mentioned it yesterday, it's so fun when players here this weekend have gotten knocked out of bracket play they still play look at that i mean that is look at that hands-on coaching <laughs> i love it so the players get a chance we have the whole facility booked through the afternoon so even when our players are knocked out of bracket play they get to play rec with each other which is i think some of their favorite parts of the weekend they get to play rec with new friends that they've made here some old ones that they are seeing again some higher level sure, play than perhaps they get at home. Out. But not only do the players do that, two. but the parents do as well. It's so fun. The parents are out here on court <laughs> playing with the other parents. I mean, everyone's just addicted to pickleball. Oh, I'd like to see her take that out of the air. Oh. Oh, tough. I really, I mean, beautiful. Oh, I mean, again, I thought she was going ATP for sure. I'm sure Champagne thought she was as well. Goes back cross court. Just a little wide on her ATP attempt. And that will be game one. Really nice effort from both these ladies. Some fabulous play. Let's see if Champagne can make a couple adjustments here. Perhaps keep that score a little bit closer. Had a couple errors she needs to cut out in game two, but excited to see these ladies back for game two in just a minute. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everyone. Game two here in our ladies' winner bracket final match. As I mentioned, their bracket a little bit smaller than the guys. Right, so ladies, while our guys are seconds. still in their quarterfinals, working their way into the semis, two, we've already made it to our winner bracket final. Zero, we have zero. Riley Bonert on the far end, and she takes on Dylan Rainbow Champagne on the near end. Oh, that was almost going to go around. Oh, it's just too good. That's so tough. A couple times Champagne has, again, she just, just a hair too late recognizing she needed to make a move for that. And again, what you'll probably notice too in terms of the footwork in some of these younger players is they haven't quite trained that lateral movement into their game. So I think you'll see a lot of the pros their footwork is so, so crucial, even in doubles, zero, but zero. even more so in singles. So being able to move laterally at that kitchen line in singles is so important to get 
to some of these shots. And we've seen Champagne, the footwork is a little not quite there yet for her, so it, it puts her at a little bit, little bit behind some of these shots she needs to get to. Zero, zero. But again, that comes with time. Side out. Zero, zero. Point. One, zero. To get a little cat and mouse between the ladies, but Bonert gets pushed back. Ah, I would have liked to see her stay up if she was able to be a little bit more aggressive. I think if both players make it up to the net, you, you gotta stay there. <laughs> Big shout out. I forget where she. Shoot, I wrote it down. I gotta find it. Hang on. Yes. Dylan attends Utah Tech University. And I believe that is the symbol for her university she was just giving there as, as a shout out to her <laughs> her fellow classmates in school. As I mentioned, when we look at our schedule for next year, the first stop of the 2023 APP Tour kicks off in Punta Gorda, Florida, January 11th through the 15th. Registration, I believe, is open right now on pickleballtournaments.com. I might be wrong. Do not take that as a fact. But go on pickleballtournaments.com. Check that out. We sell out that tournament every year. It's a really great location in Punta Gorda. Dedicated courts. Really nice job that they do there. Always a great tournament. And that's where we kick off next year. I will never complain about getting out of the Midwest in winter and getting to spend some time in Florida. Just missing that. I expect these ladies to be just as fiery as they were in game one. Ooh, just wide there. I saw it out. Side out. Two, zero. I thought that shot was out. Excuse me. Point. Champagne firing herself up over there. Again, Four, there's that zero. backhand slice. She really loves to slice that backhand. Oh, really nice job from Bonert there. Champagne kind of ran through that shot as she made her move towards the middle. Bonert able to read that really well. Go behind her. Big yep out of Boner as she hits the shot she wanted to up that sideline, putting her on the scoreboard here in game two. One, four. Side out. Champagne is doing an excellent job getting up to the net. Sometimes on the ladies' side of the game, we see four, they're one. a little hesitant to come up tend to stay at that baseline a little bit more. But Champagne, is, uh, she's doing a great Five, job one. making moves. Oh, uh, great drop. All right, Boner making her move. Oh, good pickup. Let's see if Champagne Push tries. Right oh, there. no. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so Tav Boner did such a great job getting back up, getting into that rally, but a foot fault on that volley over on that left side. Yes, six. Six, one. All right, Side same out. spot Boner hit earlier. 
And Champagne is, is doing this thing where she's running through the serve on her way to the, the net, uh, the, the return, excuse me, on that right side, which I think is the right thing to do. She's making the move to the net, but she is kind of circling towards the Boy. middle instead of just following her shot straight up. So it's letting Bonert read that she's making that move middle. She's trying to put that shot behind her down the line. a little actually flat. Normally, as I've mentioned, Champagne is slicing those backhands. She went just flat with that shot, left it a little short, I think, as a result. Bonart just overdoes it a little. She's going for that cross court sort of hook shot. Unbelievable pickup from Champagne right there. She is just grinding here. She is not giving up even a little on these shots. So awesome to see. And again, make your opponent hit one more shot. It should be, I mean, the things that we say over and over and over in pickleball, that is one of them. Make your opponent hit one more shot, and she is doing that. Bonert has been in control of some of these rallies, dictating where she's going, but she just keeps getting a paddle on these shots. They may not be the best shots. They might not be the most pretty, well-placed shots, but she's keeping it in play, and Bonert, as a result, has had some errors off of those. Jack Foster giving a little advice to Riley on the sideline. Again, it's fun to see some of these peers coaching each other during these matches, giving each other advice as they cheer each other on. Another one of the great parts of next gen. All right, let's see if Bonert has some adjustments to make. Was like the equivalent of a touchdown dance, I feel like. The pose. <laughs> Eight, two. She appreciated her form on that. <laughs> Point. All right, I mean, it's Nine, not done three. yet, but Dylan Champagne has the momentum and the energy, I think, right now to carry her into a third game. Great effort, great effort. One of the only times Boner recently has been able to keep a ball out of her reach. Two, nine. <laughs> you almost died, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh. That have been a little lower. Can you imagine if I just, just got rocked in the face with that shot? I'm not going to lie. I probably would have cried a little. Three, but you know when you get, like, hit in the nose and it just, like, makes you cry regardless? You can be like, it doesn't even hurt, but, like, if you get hit in the nose, you're going to cry. It's just, like, a fact of life. I'd rather not, just so we're clear. <laughs> Again, just such yeah, great God. placement. Champagne has just made the adjustments. Again, Nine, she doesn't have the prettiest game. Again, not coming from tennis. A little bit of a unique style, but she is a grinder. She is a grinder. And I love it. She's got herself a game point here to force a third here in our winner bracket final. Oh, she's going to get it done. I mentioned earlier she doesn't have a lot of top spin on her shots, but she top spun that shot. Oh, and a little paddle flip as she walks by. It's like her signature move. I love it. Game three coming our way here in our women's winter bracket final. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back to that next.
Welcome back, everyone. Game number trace here in our winter bracket final for our ladies. They are going blow for blow here. Dylan Champagne on the far end to start. Her nickname is Rainbow. Riley Bonert on the near end to start this third game. They'll switch ends at six. I can look at that. Look at that score. Bonert was in control in game one. Fairly handedly took it. Champagne making some adjustments, but 11 5. But again, I love that. She said, great try and before the ball even hit because she knew it was out. But that score really flipping in game two. That looked a little Shut wide. Up. Yep. And again, I think Boner might be struggling a little bit Zero, because one. Champagne has such a unique style of play and her shots are pretty hard to read, I would say. It makes it a little tough for her to anticipate where she's going to go or what she's going to do because she is kind of a little unorthodox, and I think it works brilliantly for her. One, one. Point. Two, one. Yeah, that's just so nice. Again, we saw Champagne a little bit in game two. She did struggle occasionally when she follows her return, and she, she almost takes the long route getting up to that kitchen line instead of going straight there. She'll kind of curve her. Well, I don't know how to say it. You guys know what I mean. She half choked herself during that as <laughs> she was frustrated. Yeah, just a little too overextended. That was a really nice drop from Boner. Should have let that bounce instead of trying to take that out of the air. Yeah, rocket ship right down the line there. Four, one. Dylan! Sorry, Nick. <laughs> Trying to one. take out the production crew. <laughs> oh, nice effort on both sides. One, five. A little wide there after that clips the net. Tough break for Bonart as Champagne going on a little bit of a run here, picking up some momentum. And another unlucky break here as that rolls along that net but stays in. I'd look to call maybe a timeout here, but she's going to get the side out instead. on the floor here at the attempt to get this. Such a nice shot there from Bonart. So she will get to six first, but Champagne making a nice comeback, cutting into that lead, only down by two, but they will switch ends here to conclude game three. Dylan Champagne will be on the near end. Riley Bonart on the far end. 
currently Riley Boner is not in the top three, but she is close. She's had some really good results here this weekend already, and she's looking to get a top place finish here in singles and the points that go with it to try and boost her up the leaderboard because, as I've mentioned in the past, our next gen, while we have a gold, silver, and bronze medalist each day in each of our brackets like normal tournaments, the actual winners of next gen are determined at the end of the weekend after the points from each day's events are added up and tallied and then the top five place finishers in men's and women's will walk home with some cash and the top two finishers will get a free entry into the app houston event that we mentioned coming up in just a few weeks oh great spot there a bit of a lofting shot there from bonart did not keep that very low but doesn't matter, she's Eight kept it in. Four. Oh, Four. she is just hitting those shots one after the other here. Definitely took a minute to kind of get Nine. back into Four. a groove, but she is feeling Nine. it here Four. as this third game is ramping towards its end. Timeout here from Champagne as Bonert within two. We'll see if Champagne is able to hold off Bonert here from closing out this game and heading to gold. Loser will head to bronze. And I suspect Champagne is going to give it everything she has. She has been showing a lot of grit and determination here. 15 seconds, ladies. I'm sure she's going to leave it all on the court for sure. Server, you still have two. Time in. Nine, four. Oh, get great job. Champagne has really impressed me with how quickly she's getting to the net. We talk a lot on the women's side. Sometimes they're a little hesitant to do that. You can see Bonart herself is making it up there here and there, but Champagne is making a real effort to get up there as soon as possible. You can see her closing ground right there. It's put her in a really good position. And it's what's kept her in some of these rallies and in these games. Five, nine. Yeah. Oh, oh, Side splits, off. full splits. <laughs> Again, I mean, she gets pulled off her feet and then really great job from Boner doubling up in the same nine, spot. Five. Thought Bonert had an opportunity to take that out of the air on that final shot, but look at these angles. Great job. Oh, yeah, that was a little out of her reach, probably. Five, nine. This has been a super fun match to watch. Oh, so good, so good. Four. This is going to sound weird, and nobody take this the wrong way. I'm prefacing it right now. But Dylan Champagne is playing like a guy right now, and I mean that in the sense of the strategy that she is playing singles at right now is extremely similar to how we see the men play on their side. Often the ladies stay back a little bit more they hit those ground strokes a little bit more you don't see them up at the net very often and certainly you don't see both of them up at the net very often but champagne is just getting her butt up to that kitchen line as soon as possible she is playing that cat and mouse 
She is grinding here. It's very reminiscent of the style that we see on the men's side that we don't often see on the women's side. And I think that is definitely making Riley Bonert here work a lot more for these rallies and for these points trying to take this match. Again, she was up at that kitchen line the whole time and then just ends up backing up and it puts her in a spot where she's overextended for that next shot. I would have liked to see her hold strong. But again, immediately follows her return in. I love it. These two ladies are competitors. Did her dirty. Nine, seven. Ah! Nine out. Seven, nine. Yeah, just a really nice nine return out. up the line there from Bonart. We talked about that earlier with Paul Olin. Nice serve there. Haven't seen too many of those unforced errors on the return. Unfortunately for Champagne, it gives Bonert a match point here as a result. But she's going to hold it off at least one more time. Bonert, I take a timeout right now. She was clearly very frustrated after that error. Champagne definitely can turn the tides here quickly. Oh. Again, another really great effort. Oh, was there something on the court? She lost something. Oh, no, her shoelace. She caught her shoelace and broke it off. We gotta un undo a lace trend. I mean, look at that. Zane Navratil would be so proud. He burns through shoelaces like nobody's business. Quick little shoe repair. Another match point for Riley Bonert to head to gold. If I don't see a timeout after this. If Champagne puts another point on the board, I would be shocked. All right, she doesn't need it. Definitely getting a little fired up here. Telling herself right here. She's looking to finish this. Oh, really nicely done. Again, Champagne cannot do that unless she gets to the net. Oh, I mean. 
I'm looking for a timeout. I'm looking for a timeout here from Bonert. And I don't think I'm going to see one. Nine, ten. I think this is going to be the fourth match Ten, point nine. for Riley Bonert. Again, know all too well how the pressure can mount when you're not able to close. Ooh, but she does. Took her a few times, but what a match. This might have been, I mean, look at these two. They are just... Uh, we missed we missed the giant hug between the two. I mean, I love the co the competition between these ladies. Just phenomenal. That was one of the most fun women's singles matches I have seen in a long time. We finally head to the Franklin studio now as Riley Bonert heads to gold. Oh, my goodness. Axel Morgan over there is, who's he playing? Porter Bar. Oh, we got a big crowd. Applause going on over there. We're back into the action here at Chicken and Pickle, Next Gen Dallas, right after this. Welcome to the Franklin studio. Lauren McLaughlin here with Riley Boner as she is heading to the gold medal match here in the final day of Next Gen Dallas for singles. We were just chatting. You were saying, you know, most of the people you've played all weekend you have never played before, which is generally how these Next Gen tournaments go. So when you don't know who you're going to play throughout the day, all brand new faces, it can be tough to kind of know how to play them. So for yourself, what's your strategy? What's the game you want to play coming into singles day? Yeah, so usually I don't know the people I'm playing, so I like to try to watch them play and realize what they like to do and what they don't like to do. And so with Dylan, I tried watching her, and she literally can get everything back. So I was like, I'm just going to have to try to place my shots better and have to trust myself and where I can place the ball. Yeah, it looked like she has a little bit of an unorthodox style of play, yeah. hard to read her shots. Yes. That first game, you were you seemed to be in control, handling a little bit better. She, of course, turned the tide in that second game. Throughout the match, did you notice any adjustments you knew you needed to make to kind of counter her sort of being all over and not being able to read her as much? Yeah. So in the second game, I kind of, like, hit my head with my paddle. So I kind of got very confused, and she picked up her game very well. And so I just kind of – I knew she really wanted to go to a third game, so I kind of just didn't – play fully so I could try to get my head to rest a little bit and in the third game I tried to pick it up a little bit more. Are you basically telling me that you have a concussion and we now need to like watch you because you're like dazed and confused over here? I, I never mess up the score and I was getting really confused on the score. I but didn't I think even I'm see fine. this happen. It's okay I'm fine. I just, <laughs> I'm not blaming it on her, my head. I, she yeah, yeah. played very well yeah. but um, yeah something went wrong. I'm gonna go sit down and take a little bit of a break. But she played very well. But Well, yeah. you played amazing as well. You're into the gold medal match. You could very well face her again the second yes. time, but you have a bit of a rest now as they play that bronze medal match. So definitely rest up, get rest your head, make sure you're good. And we will see you in that gold medal match in just a little bit. We're back into the action here for our gentlemen. It looks like we have 
Jaden Broderick back up taking on Jack Foster. I believe that is a semifinal match. So stay tuned. We're here at Chicken and Pickle Dallas when we return. Welcome back, everyone, to our first semifinal match here for our men's in their last day of competition. It is our singles day. We have Jack Foster on the near end taking on Jaden Broderick on the far end. We've seen both of these two already today, but obviously first time facing each other. Jaden Broderick, 16 years old, out of Greenville, South Carolina, stands at six foot four. So I, sh I think he's hit his growth spurt, have to say. Oh, looked like he, oh, I thought Foster pushed that a little wide. 
Oh, I, yeah, I do think that was wide. I think Broderick played an out ball, but it happens in singles a lot more than doubles. You don't have a partner to watch those lines for you, but Jack Foster, 21 years old, out of Vero Beach, Florida. Foster the number one seed here today, while Broderick the number five. Oh my goodness, what a rip there from Broderick. Again, he's a lefty, so that's his forehand side. Just right down that sideline. Oh, great pickup from Broderick. Again, ooh, he's got so much length to work with. Really makes getting to some of these shots a little bit easier than a shorter player. All right now it is Broderick out in front here in this first game. That's a nice drop right there from Jack Foster. Again, that very unique forehand shot. We tend to call it the windmill here. I don't even know if that's, that's a good name for it. Four, four. Mm. Yep, ramping up that serve. No spin on that serve, just a really hard hit shot right there from Foster. And I want to take this time out to quick give a shout out to some of the awesome people at Chicken and Pickle that have made our experiences for Next Gen just so fantastic. Laura Kemp is the manager here at Dallas Chicken and Pickle. She has just been so fabulous checking on us all the time, getting us food if we need it. Can I get you anything? Big shout out to Laura. She's been fantastic to work with. And of course, a big, big shout out to Chris Fisher, who we have seen at most of our stops at the different chicken and pickles. He travels around. He works. And I was told it's on his business card. It's his official title. He's the director of fun for chicken and pickle. So that's a real thing. Didn't just make that up. But we get to see him at all of our stops as he travels around. So he is over all the chicken and pickle locations as the director of fun. And it is, it is super fun being here. So I would say he's doing his job very well. Again, nice job closing ground. Uh, just some errors right now that have crept into Broderick's game and put Foster back out in front after a good start from Jaden. I mean, that was a great get from Foster, even being able to get there. some nice rips good block there I mean when Foster's blocking these drives and gets pulled off of his feet you know that's a good drive a 
again, such a great return from Foster right up that sideline that forces Broderick over to that corner of the court, which then opens up the rest of the court for Foster to work with. And even though Broderick almost got there or might get there, it pulls him all the way cross court. That's why we talk about, and Paul Olin mentioned, you know, a lot of times in singles, we will see the return go up the line. Goodness. Oh, I mean, again, Foster was in big trouble here. Can't believe he got this one, let alone this next one. And then Broderick with the error. Seven, five. Point. Got it. And yes, for anyone wondering, the food here is fantastic. I have not had a bad food experience at Chicken and Pickle. Some really great options. Their chicken is delicious. I generally have the chicken and waffles at least one time when I'm here. Nine, five. That was Broderick trying to return up the line. Good idea, but he pushed it a little wide, so Foster's going to have a game point here. In game one of the semi. And just wide. And I see Austin Chekatilov and Spencer Lanier facing off a few courts down. I believe that's our other semifinal. Yeah, Foster really making Broderick work side to side for these. Again, we talk about usually if a player is able to get up to the net and the other one stays back, they're a little bit at an advantage. Not always, but... All right, that one is called just wide here. From Foster, just missing that sideline. We'll take game one for Jack Foster. Don't go anywhere. Game two in this semifinal match to see who's heading to the winner bracket final coming your way right after this. Back into the action here at Chicken and Pickle Dallas for our next gen event, second to last of the year. We conclude our year in Kansas City in November. I will be there as well. Jack Foster on the far end taking on Jaden Broderick on the near end. Foster, bit of a slow start in game one, but was able to finally get something going, ultimately taking game one 11-6. Jaden staring down the shot before calling it out. If I'm fine.
Foster, it's tough because Broderick is a lefty. So I think it works really well for him on this particular corner right now, just like he did to go up the line, force him to use that two-handed backhand, even though it's a fabulous shot as well. But I think probably your odds are a little bit better. And when he's on the corner that he's on now, if he's returning, it's a little trickier to go up the line because that's to Jaden's forehand. So I think a little bit more of a weapon for him. I'd like to see him maybe return cross court when he's on that side, but we'll see what he decides to do. Big serve there from Foster. Little cat and mouse. Again, Broderick, six foot four. He's got the wingspan to go with it. And so shots like this one right here out of the air, a little bit easier for him. Good lateral movement. I mean, Foster handles the first two rips from Broderick. That third one giving him a little trouble, though. It can be tough because sometimes you're holding your paddle a little bit too loose, and those really hard drives can almost kind of knock it out of position in your hand. It, it's tough to find the right grip level. And, again, we talked earlier about Foster very good about using his timeouts. Uses them very wisely. Sometimes at weird times that maybe I don't understand, but it's going to have an offensive timeout here. Oh, well, speaking of Jack Foster, that is a great action photo right there, I have to say. He looks very tan as well. Put a filter on that, I think. For 2023, we have three next-gen stops coming your way. If you have not been able to make it to one this year or have a young pickleball player who has not made it to a next gen, put it on your to-do list. It is such a fun, unique experience. They will love it, I promise. We kick off in February back in San Antonio, Texas, and then two new stops next year. In July, we're in Overland Park, Kansas, and then conclude our year for next gen in November in Grapevine, Texas. I am just checking off all these chicken and pickle locations. Always such a great time. Anyone that's been to one knows what I'm talking about. to see him take that out of the air. Look at Broderick back up. Oh, he lost a shoe. I didn't even notice. Oh, <laughs> he, dr he drug his heel. I mean, that's an athlete right there. Play on. Doesn't matter if you lose a shoe. Keep going. I would have liked to see him just stay at the net. There was really no reason for him to back up. <laughs> he is not going to tie that shoe any tighter. He, he likes a loosely tied shoe. Have he even tied it all? Oh, yeah, they're t I mean, they're tied, but super not very tight. Two, one. Side out. Broderick's not into ankle support, I guess. <laughs> Again, Foster just really ramping up. I mean, his favorite shot's always going to be his forehand. Two, two. Big serve. Big forehand drives when he's got the opportunity. Yeah, you can see the slight hesitation from Broderick as he was coming up to the net and then almost changed his mind or got a little hesitant about it. 
right, he's he's playing well. I'd like to see Broderick just. you know, tr trust himself in his shots a little bit more. A little hesitant. Just li like to see, see him be a little more confident in his play because he certainly has the goods. Rip there from Foster. Again, you can see Broderick comes up to the net, but he's a little to the right of that center line, so he didn't quite cut off that cross court angle for Foster. Point. There's way too many balls coming coming close to my face over here, I have to say. Got hit again. It's, it's all right. I don't blame him. Six, oh, just a bit of a miss hit there off the paddle for Broderick. But again, it can be tough. Foster's got a weapon of a serve, even though there's no spin to it. Doesn't have to be. Good return there from Broderick. Very low. been wide too. Let's take another look at this. Very close. Oh no, super in. I'm at the other side. Looked a little closer than it was. Great spot from Foster. Yeah, that's what I want to see. I want to see that from Jaden. Give me a little bit more of that. Just a nice, confident put away. Using that power, using that length. I mean, know what your strengths are. He's, he's had some opportunities that just haven't come together. I did indeed give someone a mean look. Aaron Resnick almost hit me throwing the ball back that almost hit me the first time. He didn't mean to, though. It was a sarcastic mean look. I mean, that's good. Fully on the floor. I mean, Broderick goes down. <laughs> I mean, it w he wasn't going to get much, much more than that unless Foster was going to hit it right back to him again. But Oh, nice drop on the move there from Foster. Oh, pushes that one wide, though. Offensive timeout here from Jaden Broderick. Just maybe recollecting himself. He's kind of been thrown around this match a little bit by Foster. Obviously lost his footing a couple times. Literally lost a shoe one time. He's had some really great shots, some really great opportunities. The execution's been a little off for him in this match. Just seemingly lacking just a touch of confidence in his sort of strategy that he is trying to play out here. 
And this is a semifinal, so the winner of this will head to our winner bracket final. Our other semi was Spencer Lanier and Austin Chikatilov, and Austin came out on top of that match. Uh, again, just pushing it a little bit. He, he's got the right idea. He's finding the right spots. He's just got to hit the shots the way he needs to. So Austin Chikatilov will take on the winner of this match. Oh. Good spot. <laughs> Foster was well done before that rally actually was. Foster saying sorry. I, I'm not sure what for, actually. Eight, three. It's, it's a good shot. Surprised here, Foster. Well, mm. right out. Yeah, Foster had a couple opportunities to come up to the net that he chose not to. Not sure why exactly. Maybe he thought he just had some... Some more room to work with if he stayed a little bit deeper. Three, eight. Pushed it wide. I think Broderick needs a little bit more of this. Again, just, just staying in there, force Foster to hit one more shot. Foster not immune to errors by any means, so if Broderick can get him a little bit rattled, put a little bit more pressure on him. Again, great angle. I thought Broderick could have come up the previous rally, but just fabulous angle there. Tough for Foster to anticipate where he's going to go. So another offensive timeout here from Foster. And as I mentioned previously, registration currently open for our final tournament of 2022. It's going to be back in Mesa, Arizona at the beautiful Legacy Bell Bank Park. Over 40 dedicated courts there. Really nice facility. Humongous. Really nice championship stadium that they have set up there always a great place to be so we conclude 2022 in mesa come join us final weekend of november into early december you know in between the holidays come have a little vacay in gorgeous mesa Oh, yeah, Foster just ripping that serve. Nine, five. Mm. Side out. Yeah, I'd be interested to see why Foster is staying back a little bit more these last few exchanges. He definitely likes the cat and mouse Hi, game and I, I think plays well at the net. Oh, that stays in. I, I can't call 
Foster actually unsure if that was in or not, but when you're not sure, it's in. Oh, and another net cord. And the thing now is Foster has used his timeouts. He's used both his timeouts. These are the moments that you think about, maybe I used them too soon because he's very frustrated after those last two shots. Would be a perfect time to use a timeout, and I suspect he would have if he had one. But he does get the side out. to hypothesize that Foster is staying back because he's feeling like that gives him a little more angles to work with so he can rip that forehand drive. But he has been missing some here and there. He, yeah, the, the execution, he's, he's, it's faltering a little bit here. where we'll see if Foster can Eight, nine. mentally stay in this. Wow. <laughs> oh, tough. But massive break for Foster. I think if Broderick had come out on top of that, put himself on a game point, I I'm not sure Foster would have mentally been able. Again, great little drop there from Broderick. I mean, I have to think Foster is rethinking that timeout that he took. Being down 2-0 in this game early on because he cannot stop the momentum here with a timeout. He's got to stop it with a side out, and I think we may have a game three ahead of us. Yeah, that's definitely in. So I think Broderick just kind of saw that mistakenly out. Thought that was the match. Maybe this is the momentum swing that Foster needs. Courtney did overrule that call. That is the right one. It was clearly in. Can Foster use it? Oh, that was a shot from Broderick. The roll here. I mean, this is a backhand. Look at the roll he gets on that. Ten, nine. Another game point. Side out. I almost thought Foster was going to miss that put away. All right, this is a battle. Broderick has, I mean, he is playing completely different now, though. The second half of this second game, his confidence is clearly higher now. He is playing much more sure of himself.
timeout here offensively for Jaden Broderick at 10-10. He has lost his game point as Foster ties it up. But now he's just looking to cool himself down, get a little words of advice from, I believe, Dad. And he wants to come out of this timeout and quickly put two points on the board. He knows Foster has no timeouts. He cannot stop him. So he's going to have to do it on the court. Mano a mano, as it were. Nothing left but play here. No timeouts on either side. They're going to have to finish this right now. Again, make him hit one more shot. That was a big, big rally and point for Foster to stay in control that whole time and earn himself back a match point. <gasps> wow, he withstands. What a second game here. Jaden Broderick taking him to the brink. So it is Jack Foster who will face Austin Chikatilov in our winner bracket final. I believe we'll have a consolation bracket match coming up first. We will have Howard versus Josh Neg to 15, and then we'll have that winner bracket final coming up for our gentlemen. I head to the Franklin studio to talk to Foster, and we will be back into the action here as we're winding down our final day at Next Gen Dallas. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Franklin Studio, everyone. Lauren McLaughlin here with Jack Foster as he heads to our winner bracket final. And hopefully, if it turns out good, to the gold medal match. We'll see how it plays out, though. We talked a little bit yesterday that you've played at several of the Next Gen events, and you've got to see some of these kids kind of progress. You have played Jaden before at a previous Next Gen. Was it different facing him this time? Has he improved since the last time you saw him? Yeah, he played much better uh, this time. You know, I think he got a lot of bit, a little bit lower on his backhand, which really helped him out. And uh, I think that just playing a lot of matches helped me out there. That game two could have went either way, and uh, that'll come with match experience for him. Definitely someone to look out for. I think he can be one of the best players if he keeps playing pickleball. I mean, 
people, of course, back home, they know you already. You play a lot on the pro circuit. Some people might wonder, what are, what are you doing here at Next Gen? This isn't for you. But I think you have proved kind of time and time again that even though you're playing pro, some of these upcoming players that maybe haven't had a chance or the opportunity to go, they're they're pushing you here. I mean, it's you're not rolling through anybody by any chance. What is your personal kind of goal coming to these Next Gen events as you're working to develop your own game? Yeah, uh Obviously, all the players here are great and can uh, push me at any time. Uh, personally, I'm trying to refine my game a little bit, make less mistakes into the net, and uh, work on drops a little bit more. But uh, just get more match experience, and that's, this is awesome for that. And uh, it's great to meet new people and come here and play. You are facing the Amazon man, Austin Chikatilov, in that winner bracket final. Tough opponent, another very tall person you're going to face here, a bunch of really crazy tall people. It's weird. What's going to be your thought process to try and come out on top into that gold medal match? Yeah, I've played Austin several times. He's a fantastic player. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go out there and play my game, hopefully make a lot of shots and limit the mistakes. I think that's a big thing for today, getting balls over the net instead of into it. And uh, hopefully I can come out on top. Looking forward to it. That's what they say, uh, over the net, in the court. That's the, the first step, Jack. Well, congratulations getting into that winner bracket final. We'll see you in just a couple matches. We have one consolation match before we get there, though, so don't go anywhere. We're back into the action here at Chicken and Pickle, Next Gen Dallas, right after this.
Welcome back, everyone. We have a brand new face here on Center Court, which is always very exciting for me at these next gen events. We have Chaz Howard on the far end in white, 17, senior in high school out of Queen Creek, Arizona. And I am hearing from the chat room that he has a gnarly spin serve as well that we haven't got to see yet in action, at least here on the stream. He takes on Ethan Joshneg, who has a pretty gnarly spin serve himself in the black. So we'll see how these two face off. It is one match to 15. Howard was initially knocked out of the winner bracket by Garrett Whitehead. Good leave. He had to battle through Brian Hickman, Nick Delgado and Carson Lohr zero, zero. to face Ethan here. Nope. This match is to stay alive. Still several more matches to be played in the back draw before a player makes it back into the bronze medal match. All right, so <laughs> first free point off the Howard spin serve. Yeah, just really nicely done as he sort of methodically works his way up here. Three, zero. He's working those sides. Point. Four, zero. Oh, sounded like a bit of a miss hit there. Off what I believe is a gearbox paddle. Josh Nug using a diadem paddle. Point. Gets a free point of his own off his spin serve. Let's we'll see if this just, uh, again, battle of the spin serves. Side out. Four, one. Josh Neg <laughs> telling himself to calm down. He is 22 years old, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. That's where he was just at. Just completed about a week ago his four-year stint of active duty in the Army. He will now be attending school. Oh, yeah, that is just a nice slice volley there from Howard. Just takes all the pace off of that shot. Doesn't drop it very close to the net. Didn't even make it in the kitchen, but again, just enough change of pace. Josh Neg was not expecting it. Yeah. Really nice shot there. Howard barely clips his paddle with it, but giving a compliment as it sails by, saying that's a beautiful shot. Side out. Ooh, bringing the heat here. Love the way he closes the net here. Again, bit of a slice on that volley. Seven, two. One point away from an end change. Oh, yeah. I mean, you guys have been hyping him up in the chat, and I can see why. Jess Howard came to play. Josh Neg is the number 10 seed in our very deep men's singles bracket, while Howard the number 29 seed. And both of them have a pretty intense spin serve. It's been interesting that most, it's almost like the most concentration of crazy spin serves is happening this weekend here at Next Gen. I think the younger players have latched onto the spin serve and they love it. They're trying to make it as crazy as possible, just do as many wild things as they can with it. Well, while the older crowd, I think, has, has had a few more issues with it than the younger, the younger crowd has embraced it. 
It makes for good content. <laughs> so they're all about it. They probably won't be able to use it for much longer. So they're going to do everything they can with it while they still can. Great spot there from Josh Neg. Oh, yeah, again, just beautiful two-handed back in there from Josh Neg down the line. Catching Howard, making the move to the middle. You can see kind of slipped as his weight was going towards the center. So next door, Lauren Mercado. Mercado, excuse me, there is no R in there. Lauren Mercado. Mercado. Why do I, it keeps trying to get in there. R, get out of my mouth, jeez. Taking on Ivy Cheddar next door and people keep yelling for Lauren. I am getting confused. Oh, perfect spot there from Howard. Right at Josh Negg's feet. Yeah, it almost looks like he had tripped up a little on a. Side out. Mercado out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm, tough. Good recovery off the net here as he closes in. That has plenty of time to recover. Just pushes that a little wide. <laughs> Sound like the Pillsbury Doughboy. That was Ken Herman, everyone. I want everyone to know who just said, he, 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 he. That was Ken Herman. <laughs> What a weirdo. <laughs> I'm just joking. I love Ken. But he is still kind of a weirdo. But so am I. Oh, Mike Anderson and Aaron Resnick do a battle behind me. For the most part, pretty... Short rallies happening. Oh, yeah, just a miss hit there. It looked like Howard just kind of lost the grip on his paddle. So the tough part about next-gen tournaments is we'd like to stream a lot more of the matches and show you guys a lot more of the players at home. But because we're at Chicken and Pickle, we do have a limited window of availability that we have these courts for. So we really cannot hold up any matches to try and get them on the stream like we can at a normal tournament. So unfortunately, we can't have as many matches as we'd like because we do have to be done in the early afternoon, usually on these days. So we got to keep them moving and we, we cut it close a lot of these days. So we apologize if you were, if you were looking for one of these young players to be on the stream. Hopefully we can get them at the next event. Oh, great drop there from Howard. Again, that drop volley, so useful in singles. If you can do it well, because it's so easy to spot your opponent if they're on the move, on their back heels, in the back of the court, that drop volley can be very effective. All right, we're gonna have a timeout here from Josh Neg is Howard just three points away from continuing on in our background, as I mentioned. Still a handful of matches to be played in that backdrop for our guys before a player makes it back up into the bronze medal match. Again, we have our winner bracket final coming up next, I believe, for our men, which is going to be Jack Foster versus Austin Chikatilov. And then we 
I believe, oh, we may have our women's gold medal match first if they're ready. We'll have to see. Big, big shout out to Dee Davison, who is running our tournament desk for us off site. So she has been on Zoom the whole time, <laughs> helping put together these matches. Of course, Bob Swisshelm and Courtney Johnson are two referees here. Courtney, our head referee for this next gen event, just absolutely crushing it. Again, there's that drop volley. Point. And this time Josh Knight gets to it. But again, when you're on the move and you're Four running minutes. to get a shot, you're probably not going to hit a really great shot. Side out. Pulls that one wide. All right, Six Josh Knight, bit of a hill to climb here. I mean, I don't want to put Howard on blast like that, but that was not necessary, and I'm pretty sure he would have actually gotten that shot had he not attempted the tweener. Side out. <laughs> 13, seven. Point. Yeah, that's a beautiful drop, though. Ugh, just that, yeah, that's just too good. Too good. Josh Nagel will use his second final timeout here with Howard sitting on a match point coming out of this. <laughs> oh, they're talking about it. He just wanted it on the stream. He, he, needed, a, a, he needed a flashy shot. I gotta say though, if you're gonna go for a flashy shot, you should probably make it. Otherwise, is it really as good? Can't put it on the highlight reel if you don't make it. Got to meet Josh Knight at one of our very first Next Gen events and then didn't see him for a while. As I mentioned, uh, he was on active duty for the Army, so that, of course, took up a lot of his time. But super happy to have him back. But he is done for the day here in singles, so Chaz Howard continues on in our singles bracket, hoping to make it back into bronze. Very nice play. Happy to be introduced to another new face here. We'll take a short break, and then I believe, again, I'm not sure exactly what's coming up next, but it's either our men's winter bracket final or our ladies' gold. I'm not entirely sure where we're at in those brackets, so stay tuned. Wait for it. Wait for it. I'll keep you posted. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back, everyone, to our men's singles winner bracket final. We are going to have Jack Foster on the far end, taking on Austin Chikatilov on the near end. Lauren McLaughlin here, along with Paul Olin. This might be your final match, Paul. You got to you got to jet out of here soon, right? Unfortunately, yes. I know. If I could do it over well, again. <laughs> We'll Life is calling. Another flight. <laughs> All right, these are our one and two seeds. Bob Swisshelm refereeing. These two have played each other before, so it should be a good matchup. Good cat and mouse right out of the gate. So currently, Austin Chikatilov is the leader on the scoreboard going into today for the standings here for Next Gen, while Jack Foster 
was tied at second. So definitely how these two end today is going to determine which one comes out on top. Ooh, Boy. over does it just a do, smidge. Do we know, like, if – will this come down to the winner? I think so, yeah. Oh, Whoever finishes right. higher, I think, and will be the, the winner. winner. The overall winner. Yep. Interesting. All right. A lot more on this match than just the match. I mean, someone heads to gold, someone heads to bronze. They could still be in the running, even if they lose this winter bracket final, but certainly a little bit easier to go straight to gold, so we'll see who heads there. Good leave there for Foster. All right, a timeout here for Chikatilov. Yes, Pretty Time quickly as Foster four, goes up 4-0. Are you noticing anything right out of the gate that Which it appears Austin's struggling with a little bit? Jack's hitting his shots. He's hitting good mm -hmm. shots. And, uh, you know, Austin's made a couple errors there, but those were almost forced errors. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm seeing some. Maybe the first shot when they were at the – when they were both at the kitchen, mm -hmm. he went for an aggressive forehand down the line. I would say that maybe that was an unforced error, but the rest, I think, uh, at least the points I was watching, Jack Jack was imposing his will on the game so far. Yeah, he's just rocking those, of course, forehand serve drives. That's probably his favorite and best shot. Nice shot closing. The gap and get into the kitchen by Jack. Five, zero. He's been starting great on every single match today, mm -hmm. getting a good early lead. Nice volley by Austin. Yeah, He's got course. a good solid. Chikatilov, so six five. foot five, so definitely a lot of length and reach at his advantage. But ooh, all right. Boy. I mean, closes very well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he can close in like two steps to the kitchen line. So, One, five. I think Foster knows that. He's been trying to yep. certainly avoid him being able to do that. Point. And we'll see if Jack, you know, decides to go behind him. That's a good way to counter his his speed and his closing ability. Two, five. Same for both of them. Both are very quick players. Point. It's a nice shot. Yeah, Foster lets that one go. Thinks it's going to miss, but... Doesn't, and again, I mean, Foster was up, what, 5-0? And now <laughs> Chikatilov feels like he has all the momentum. Three, just five. how quickly that turned. Point. Like a lot of matches in pickleball, it's a game of runs. And I think oh, this sure. certainly will not be the exception. Four, five. Oh. Wow. Side out. Chick the lob almost going down over there. Just a little slippery, maybe. Five, four. Oh my God, I think Good drive at the both back players end. know how good the other one is and how dangerous they can be, Six, and so. Four. They're trying to hit perfect shots, and that can sometimes lead to some errors as well. I saw it hit the line. Boy. Hmm. calls that serve long, but overruled Seven, by Bob four. Swisshelm. Great court coverage. Great court coverage. Of course, Foster has a little bit more tournament experience than Austin does, especially at a high level. Seven, four. I think Austin told me they played him in Chicago, I think, in one and three. Okay. I think that's our most recent match. Yeah, and again, Side I out. mean, how long a player has played doesn't necessarily mean anything. It simply means a little bit more experience okay. at that level, you know, a little bit more reps. Always four, helpful, but yeah, Austin coming on the scene here. Fairly quickly, I, I think he'll start to break into the pro scene maybe a little bit more at the end of this year, early next year, as he's really kind of focusing a little bit more on developing his pickleball game.
great demeanor, great attitude. Yeah, super uh, nice guy. Game. Awesome partner. Um, I, I've been very impressed. I hadn't met him until this weekend, and uh, very, very impressed. Yeah, I have. I will humbly admit, I had not met him before, but sort of seeing him on social media and around, I perhaps had a bit of a impression about what kind of a person he was going to be, and it, none of that, none of that. He's out there stretching uh, some of his competitors. He's in, in the nicest he's, dude. He's, he's helping everybody Oh, my out gosh. There. Team is, each player has one remaining timeout. Time in. Seven, four. Foot fault as well. Sorry, with the back foot. <laughs> foot fault called. Doesn't matter, though. Eight, four. Oh. Oh, he must have drugged yep, the left foot behind. Missed it. Point. I think that's the right move for Austin. He's so yep. good at those. Aren't he just? You know, he hasn't he's a had behind it. Besides that last point, I haven't seen one kitchen violation on him on any of his earnings all week. So his oh, footwork no. is impeccable. I mean, he's like a foot past the line every time. Point. Or out. Thank you. Side out. Four, nine. Side out. Good duck. Good duck. It's been two. There, I've had to duck like four times today, Paul. I'm getting real sick of <laughs> flinching over here. It's only a matter of time before one gets me. Yeah, we've seen Austin a couple times switch that paddle over into the left hand to try and get some of those shots. He did it on that one, but just off the edge of the paddle. Point. Did I just played some warm up points with him a few minutes ago, and uh, I tried to lob him. Uh huh. Yeah, man, he pulled, did, he pulled out his left well. hand. He pulled out his oh, left yeah, hand yeah. to hit the overhead. Point. Nice shot. First game, 11 All right, four, nice shot there. So Foster, I mean. Pretty dominating here. I suspect we'll see some adjustments from Chikatilov going into game two, and it will be a little bit closer. But again, who knows? We'll see. Obviously. We'll take a short break. And uh, what was he, what were you saying? Were you? I would say obviously I didn't warm warm him up good enough. Oh, it's we match. can blame Paul for this if he if he doesn't win. <laughs> All right, back into the action with game two right after this. Welcome back, everyone. Game number two here in our men's singles winner bracket right, final gentlemen. underway Game on the two, near end, Tommy Jack in. Foster. Zero, zero. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> on the far end, Austin Chikatilov. Foster Five. pretty dominant in game one, taking it 11-1. Really? Really? Four. Why did I say one? Sometimes zero, my brain zero. just malfunctions, especially at the end of the weekend. Thank you, Paul. I'm so glad you're here. Sorry. If you're Austin 
and you're giving him advice coming into the second game, what does he need to adjust that wasn't working in game one? E easier said than done, but Jack is, as zero, most zero. of the time, uh, is hitting his forehand. He's just on. Um, you need to get to Jack's backhand. Um, and the way you do that, in my opinion, is you got to attack his forehand first, and you got to give him different balls, different speeds, zero, different zero. depths. Just don't allow him to hit it in a strike zone. Try to make him a little bit uncomfortable. Then if you can survive that attack, then go to his backhand. That was a perfect example. Austin actually went twice to his forehand there early in the, in the point. Then you just open up the court, give you some options. Again, it's easier said than done, but mm -hmm. that's a way to beat Jack. Point. And I think, too, uh, again, you mentioned it. A few too many errors from Austin in game one. If he can cut those down here in game two, puts him in a much better spot as well. Try and force some from Jack instead. Point. Great spot down that sideline. Be patient. You know, don't go for too much. That was a great passing shot, but the, the previous shot set that one up, in my opinion. He wasn't going for a winner, just a nice, steady hey, backhand hey, drive down the line. Nice. Oi. It was good. Opened up the court with a wide forehand serve, and then inside out forehand. Back towards Jack's uh, backhand. Looks like Austin's made some good corrections here. I'd expect a timeout out of Jack here. Yep. If he doesn't get this point. Nice. Side good out. anticipation by Jack. It does seem like Austin as well in this second game. He seems a little more steady. He, he was a little chaotic in game one. Jack kind of was not Zero, letting him three. settle in. And he, he just he seems a little more focused here coming out in game two. Jack's really driving One, well here. Three. Austin's just been a little bit late on a lot of his volleys. Point. Ran out of room. I nice mean, shot you know Jack. how yeah, you know how great of a shot three, is three. when Austin can't get to it because he can get everywhere so quickly. Great shot. That's so impressive how far Jack goes. I mean, on that return, Austin basically hit it on that left base, on that left, left sideline, and Jack ran all the way around it. Hit a great shot and kept in the Three, point. Two. Point. It's a good serve all the way in that bottom left-hand corner, making Jack work to get all the way around. Four, two. I mean, great hands, both yep. of them. Great Side anticipation on both sides. Two, four. And that's the thing, too. I think maybe Foster, because he does have more experience and he likes that cat and mouse, and that is often played with a lot of the players he plays at the pro level, he does. He's honed that anticipation really well, and Austin's still maybe figuring out that cat and mouse game a little bit. Good timeout here, I think, from Jack. I think Jack's a little winded, so trying to get his heart rate under control. He knows this is a big point. Close it from uh, a two-point deficit to one. So I like this timeout. He's done a great job all day today with the use of his timeouts. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's come out of the, I don't want to jinx him, but I'm going to say it, but he's come out of every timeout and, and won a point or two. Yeah, I think he's done a really good job of just using them to just settle himself, focus. Receiver, you still have two. Come in, gentlemen. Two, four. Side out. Good job by Austin. Survived the attack off the forehand four, and got to two. his back end. That's long. Side out. Long. Good attempt. Two, four. 
Right out. That may be the first time today that somebody has gotten two jacks back in on a return, at least that I've seen. Yeah, it's tough to do. Yep. Four, two. Point. These are small, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of effort to run around and hit forehands all day. And mm -hmm. it's already been a long day. You know, those last two points could be a sign that Jack is getting a little fatigued. Could be, we'll see. Yeah, one of the That was a great shot by Austin. Jack was anticipating a cross court. Yeah. Six, two. Again, just the anticipation from Foster is so good. Like, I can't believe he got this one. Yep. Because he set that last one up a little high, and I was like, oh. No. It's good, though. He saw that he had Austin reaching, and that would have been a very difficult shot for Austin to pull that cross court. Side out. Yeah, I think Jack's a little fatigued right now. He'll get it back, though. Sometimes it just takes a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he must be tired because this is... I like it, though. He's He's got to use them. Just get some energy back. Sometimes you just need a few minutes to regroup. I, You know, personally, this is why I, I bring little things that I like to eat, little snacks. And every sure. single time out or any time as a break, I'm, I'm eating something. Just getting the energy. Just yeah. keep calories in my body. Something that I know I can digest. Um, you'll need, on a long day of singles, you're burning so many calories mm -hmm. and you're not hungry. Because yeah. the nerves, the stress, yep. um, it's not, you, you're not hungry. You just don't want anything to eat, but you've got to take in calories. If you're just drinking an electrolyte drink, that's not enough calories. And your body will start to fail. And actually what fails first is your mind, yeah. which is your decision making. And then your footwork goes, and then, and then your game goes. And you, you can't let that happen. So hopefully Jack has been taking in enough calories today in between the matches and uh, just needs a little time here to regroup. We'll see. Nine in, gentlemen. Two, six. Yeah! Side out. All right, first time. Chikatilov is getting a little fired up here vocally. Yep. Jack. I think was indecisive on that shot. Didn't leave it down down the line. I think that's what he wanted. Yeah, Chikadolov yep. is just really kind of locked in here. He, he's starting to really recognize patterns a little bit better. Jack's tired. He's just Side out. not as crisp. Just like a half a step late now on some shots. That's good. Do that. Just take some time in between points. Try to regroup. Two, seven. It's nice. Get it right off the kitchen line. Three, seven. Asking Four, Bob. Seven. Call is out. That Ooh. is side also going to be out down that sideline. Yeah, he, there's not an opening there for a window. He in it for a winner. He, he needed to just keep a nice low shot down the line. Side out. Four, seven. Side out. 
both sides right now are not into this match mentally, I think. Yeah. They, just need, they need to buckle down. Seven, four. Side out. Yeah, just trading side outs right now. Yep. It's a big point. Next point scored. I think four, seven. One. Nice volley. Side out. Seven, four. Point. Just little things like that. Like he had that aligned. His feet were set. I just don't think he got as low as he wanted to get Eight, beneath the four. ball. That's why I ended up in the net. Great return. Nice. Side out. Working behind him, that's the way to do it. Four, eight. Wow. Point. I just did not see the, how that, <laughs> that playing out, how it did. Nope. I think Jack would have liked to have closed on the Five, previous eight. shot and yeah. before he did, but he's lucky he escaped with a point there. Nice volley. Side out. Eight, five. There it is. Come on. Nice Point. shot. That was nice and controlled. Didn't overhit it. Just nice and smooth. Tried to switch paddles again. Jack going behind him now. Good shot. Five, nine. Five out. Yeah, it's interesting. You can kind of almost judge the, the level of fatigue based on as the drives keep getting a little lower. <laughs> <laughs> that was not quite clear in the net. I think he's hurting a little bit. Even on the previous volley from Jack, it was a lot higher than he wanted. He left it up. Point. Yeah, he's just missing by a little bit. Time out, server. 10 5. All right, this is going to be a game point for Austin Chukatolov coming on this timeout. I kind of like it, but then I kind of don't like I, I like it. This is obviously a big point for Austin, and he wants to close it out. So I like the timeout from that perspective. But on the flip side, he has to be recognizing that Jack is fatigued. And, you know, when, he, when, my, when, my, as well. yeah, when my opponent is fatigued, even if I am, you know, I, I, a lot of t most of the times, not every time, but I like to think I'm in better shape than my opponent. And sure. if, if he does not have any timeouts, I don't care how tired I am, I'm not going to take a timeout. Yeah. And I, I mean, no offense to Jack, I have to s assume, I I'm going to say Austin's probably in a better shape than Jack. And not that Jack is not in shape at all, but I, I do think probably Jack is a little bit more fatigued. Like you said, I, I yep. do think it's a little. Time in, gentlemen. Ten, five. Oh no, he couldn't, he couldn't even move to the next one because he was teetering on that kitchen line. It's tough, so we are going to go to a third game here for our winner bracket final. Don't go anywhere. The thrilling conclusion. Who's headed to gold and who's headed to bronze? Coming your way right after this.
All right, a third game is coming your way. Let's see if this couple minutes of rest has helped our two players who are battling it out here. Jack Foster on the far end, Austin Chukatilov on the near end. Bill switch ends at six. All right, Good start. it's Foster right out of the gate. We have our women's bronze medal match playing next door. Ivy Cheddar is taking on Dylan Champagne. While Riley Bonert is waiting in the gold medal match for the winner of that. And we still have a handful of backdraw matches in our men's bracket until we know who's getting back into bronze. So huge draw today on the men's side. Mm -hmm. Side out. One zero. Wow, I mean, again, Great gets. it's like four gets that never should have happened. Again, great anticipation from Foster. Yep. Foster with a, a semi-hard drive there down the line and realizing that Austin one probably zero. couldn't turn on that so he could sit on the down the line shot. Nice, nice one, too. Side out. Yeah, Chikatilov is able to take some of these balls out of the air that another player would not just because of his reach. That's especially helpful in singles when if you can volley a shot, gives your opponent that much less time to set up and anticipate the next one. Nice volley. That was solid. One, zero. Mm, bit of a miss hit there for Foster. Yep, he just said it to himself, move his feet. Just a little sloppy there, didn't get as low as he probably should have. Zero, one. All right. Yeah, just, nice. I mean. Mix up the serve a little bit, just a loft of the serve. Something different gave him an attackable third shot, which is what you're looking for in singles. Get a shot that you can drive. One, one. Ah. Uh, one, one. I think if he had gone cross court yeah, with that lab, I was lab, literally he had just a, thinking uh, cross court lab. <laughs> It was surprising me the way. It just would have given him a little bit more court to play with. Two, one. Good attempt. Oh. Side out. I mean, that, that dipped significantly, but he still just got a hold of that too much. One, he had three. Austin pulled. Side out. Two, one. Wow. Great shot Point. by Jack. That roll, just phenomenal. What a get by Austin. I mean, how did he get that? It's easy. Six foot five it's legs, that's one. how. Jack's just overhitting his drives right now. At least they're out of the net, which is a good sign, but he's just One, going three. for too much. Oh, he 
Yes, right. Again, these hands battles. I like that. Right, a body that, shot. Yeah, yeah, that last yeah. shot from Austin. So That's smart. Good. He's seeing that, that Jack is picking up on his tendencies and reaching and able to get to the volley. Hey, so it's a good time to go with the body. Side out. It's draining playing against a, a, a player that's three, as long three. as Austin, and that makes you go for more on your passing mm -hmm. shots. And I think that's probably what Jack is battling with right now. Four. Unforced error on that return. Four, two. It's good, I think, based on the response from Foster. Two, four. Ooh, yeah, he just really got a hold of that. <laughs> Three, four. Point. Oh, I'm so glad that was coming much slower. <laughs> Hit you, though, Paul. <laughs> Tag. <laughs> Slow hands. Four, four. My gosh. Timeout server. Five, four, one minute. What? Great point. I have no words. I have no words. One more ball. One more shot. Ugh. Spe I'm speechless. That's pickleball. That was. Who called the timeout? Austin did, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Here's another one. It's I like it, but then a, I like it because he's win. Obviously, he's winded. Yeah. And this would be great to take a six-four lead into the churn. On the flip side, he's real close to the churn. Yeah, just try and get the six and try and get the turn, possibly. But you know, if, if he doesn't take a timeout, doesn't win this point, then yeah. You don't know, so I I, I I think I'm talking oh, myself into I like it. All right. Receiver, you still have two. That's why he's Five out there gentlemen. and we're sitting here. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely why I'm sitting here. <laughs> you, I don't know. Good. Oh, Jack. those are just great spots from Jack. Nice shot, especially after that last point. Mm -hmm. That last point is a tough one to take, but just great control. I think that timeout helped Jack, too. Yeah, probably so now, I don't, now I don't like it. Yeah, you changed your mind. Oh, that was out, yep. Goes out. Side out. Yeah, that clipped the net but just landed long, unlike the previous one that landed in after clipping the net. Five, four. Side out. They're both starting to sit on the backhands because both of them are attacking their backhand at the, at the net. Four, five. Wow. I thought he almost missed that one. That's a great shot by Jack. Great anticipation. Five, five. Side out. This is the right shot. Oh, yeah. Austin saw he got that down. Way to close right here. It was perfect. Yeah, I mean, Jack almost got it back. That was yeah. crazy. He, he anticipated it really well, just couldn't get that paddle on it. So I'm, I'm sure he saw Austin out of the corner of his eye, too, and that probably helped him miss that shot. Chikatilov gets to six, but just barely ahead of Foster, who's trailing just by one here 
into this end change in this third game of our winter bracket final. Austin Chikatilov on the far end now to conclude this winter bracket final. Jack Foster on the near end. One of these gentlemen heads to gold, one heads to bronze at the conclusion of this match. I was trying to figure out what he was doing. Was he like singing a song to himself? Was he just yeah. going through a strategy? Good thought. Good. Yeah, it's the right, right place, but just got to give himself a little bit of margin. What do you think of this timeout immediately after? You got to take it. He, I, mean, I know, but you, you just changed ends. You had that break. You don't want to wait. One. If you're in here, you wait one more, I, I think. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, that was a very short rally. Yeah. It's not like he's tired after the end change in that exchange. No, but he's got two timeouts. Didn't I he think. use one already? I think he used one. I'm not certain. I'm getting fatigued now. I don't remember. <laughs> You're like, I don't remember anything. Do you know where you are, Paul? What year is Dallas, it? Dallas, yes. <laughs> My Each player has one remaining I'm old, time but <laughs> you're, you're, those, still, you're those, still hanging in there. They haven't. Cognitively. Not, <laughs> set in yet. It's common. <laughs> time in, gentlemen. Oh, I didn't hear Bob say Seven, how many timeouts were left. Missed it. That's what happens when I try and make fun of you for being old, Paul. I miss he didn't Bob say it. saying. I, didn't he? he didn't say oh, okay, good. I didn't miss yeah. it. That's what I thought you were saying. He didn't Eight, five. We'll have to critique him later. Point. Yeah. Chikatilov trying to fire himself up over there. You see that in singles all the time. You don't have a partner to pump you up, you got to do it yourself. Five. So a lot of players talking to themselves, getting vocal. On forced air here, Jack. And again, he doesn't, he, he's out of timeouts. Okay. I think he's definitely out of timeouts, and he would have used one if he had it. Match point. point. Good play. Oof. What a match. That was exciting stuff. All right, so it is Austin Chikatilov heading to the gold medal match. Jack Foster will have to survive the bronze if he wants a rematch. I'll head to the Franklin studio, and then we are back into the action with our, I'm not sure yet, maybe a feeder match because I see our bronze medal match for the ladies still going on, and we got a couple feeder matches in the backdrop. We'll see what's on deck in just a moment. And, Paul, are, are you leaving us now? Got to catch a flight. Thanks, Thank Lauren. you so much to Paul Olin being fun. our senior pro mentor this weekend. So much fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I did. I, I know the blast. kids did. Yes, it was uh, It was a great experience. I'd love to do it again. Uh, anybody else out there that wants, you know, is thinking about doing it, I highly recommend it. It was a blast hanging out with all the kids and Lauren sometimes. I mean, it's, and yeah, that's, it, don't. Right. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. And, uh, Five stars. Lots, lots Five of energy stars. here. You can hear Ivy in the background. Oh, yeah, for sure. So it's good all times. Right. Well, a big thank, thank you. you and goodbye to Paul Olin as he heads out. We'll see you, of course at the next APP tournament on the, on the circuit. All right, we'll see you there. We'll take a short break into the Franklin studio right after this.
Welcome back to the Franklin studio. Lauren McLaughlin here with Austin Chikatilov as he is heading to gold. That match might have been the first time all weekend I've seen you even start to look a little tired out on court. <laughs> How are you feeling after that match? Yeah, I'm exhausted. Playing Jack is obviously very grueling. We've played several times before, and he's so tough. Uh, it definitely takes a lot of mental strength, especially those three setters, and it's been a long day. We got here at like 6.45, warming up, so just trying to get stronger every single match. That was kind of my mentality. Um, as you go deeper into these tournaments, it's very hard to keep your level of play consistent, so I'm working on my consistency, and I'm really just trying to stay at a high level all day long. So, We, of course, haven't seen you for too long on the pickleball scene. The ladies are so Very loud, my goodness. So you, of course, you're trying to focus a little bit more, dedicate a little more time to pickleball and trying to make a run into the pro scene. What specifically are you doing maybe on court, off court, that's been your real focus as you're looking to kind of break into the next level in the pickleball scene? Yeah, so I just try to stay dialed in with everything. So my mental game, my nutrition, I'm a nutritionist, so I really try to eat clean so I have lots of energy. Um, obviously, I'm in the gym a lot. I'm doing a lot of rehab and yoga just so I stay loose and prevent injuries. So I just try to stay locked in in every aspect so that when I come out here and I'm in a three-setter, I can pull it out and stay strong mentally, physically, and emotionally. All right, well, you're going to need all of those things in the gold medal match for sure. If you want to come out on top, you are at the top of the leaderboard right now. So definitely that gold medal is going to solidify your first place spot. So we'll see if you can get it done. We'll, t we'll take a short break, though. We have a few more matches still to play until we're into the medal rounds for the men. But don't go anywhere. We are back with something. I don't know something. what it is. Something's on deck. We promise something is still coming here at Next Gen Dallas. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
We are launching Selkirk TV, which brings the best pickleball content to your smartphone, tablet, and big screen TV. This is 24-7 Pickleball, proudly brought to you by Selkirk. Welcome, everyone. We are back with a very special guest, Laura Kemp, who is our pickleball manager here at the Dallas location. You were, you are going to the Grapevine location, though, which we will be at next year. So we'll see you again. First of all, just tell us, uh, we talk all the time about chicken and pickle when we're here for next gen. But what are sort of your favorite parts about chicken and pickle just in general, the company, the location, whatever, whatever sure. you want to talk about? My, my favorite is our hearts are local, and you'll see that, and it's not just a hashtag, meaning we give back to the community all the time. We host two tournaments a month in which we pay for the courts, we run the tournament, uh, we have charity cornhole tournaments, we have a green cup campaign now turned pink, 
uh, in honor of our cluck cancer. You can see we've got the shirts, the hats, the cups, all of it. We are, we are all in, if you will. We are all in to support our local community, so our hearts are local. I love that. That's, that's so great. We always just, everyone at every chicken and pickle that we go to, so welcoming, just so great every time we come. Let's focus a little bit on the Cluck Cancer Campaign. So it's at every single chicken and pickle location. Yes, if anyone is near one, if you go to one, this just started recently. Just tell us a little bit about what you're doing with this, how people can help contribute, all that sure. good stuff. So with that, we have the t-shirts, the hats, the cups. We have paddles coming that uh, are a tribute to Cluck Cancer. If all of our stores sell out of our merchandise, then we are going to be giving back $75,000. And that goes to the local um, organizations at each of our locations. So, it, you know, everyone does something for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Our president, Kelly Aldridge, she wanted us to go all in. She used those words, go all in to support. So we're trying to sell out of our merchandise and with, to include our paddles, shirts, and hats. And everybody that buys the merchandise, part of it, all of it's going towards the, breast cancer awareness? The proceeds towards it, so the cost, I believe we're absorbing that cost, and then the proceeds goes to the organizations. Awesome. If you are near a chicken and pickle location, absolutely go down there. These shirts are fantastic. Get a shirt, grab a hat, grab a cup, whatever you can do to help. If somebody doesn't have a chicken and pickle near them, can they go online and buy stuff? I don't know that they have that opportunity to purchase online, but they could reach out to anyone at any of the chicken and pickle locations. Their pickleball manager will help make that happen. I know that for sure. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Laura. It yes, has been such a pleasure. You have been fantastic. Just checking up on us all the time. Good Southern hospitality. Thank it's you. so fun every time we come. And we will see you next year yes, at the Next Gen in Grapevine, Texas, when you're at that location. But again, we just wanted to give a big thank you to Laura and the whole staff here at the Chicken and Pickle in Prairie Ridge, Texas. It's always such a fantastic time. Go to your local Chicken and Pickle if you have one near you. Even if it's not right near you, drive there. Pick up some merch. Have a great time. Play some pickleball. It's always fun. And hopefully you can get some of this cancer merchandise and we can sell you guys out at every location and hopefully ramp up that giving. But again, thank you so much to everyone at Chicken and Pickle. You guys just crush it every time we're here for Next Gen. So again, a big thank you. And don't go anywhere. Pickleball action still to come before we sign off for the weekend. Don't go anywhere. I think I uh, might have a men's feeder match. I think that's coming up next. Thanks, guys.
Welcome back, everyone, to the action. Thank you for your patience while we worked through our brackets a little bit, but super thankful we had a chance to talk to Laura just a little bit about Chicken and Pickle. Ah, she is my favorite. I love her. And the Cluck Cancer campaign that they got going on. Again, head to your local Chicken and Pickle if you have one. Get some of that merchandise. Help out for breast cancer awareness. These are really nice shirts, too. I have to say I'm very excited. I'll be wearing this often. So we have our final feeder match into bronze. Right now we have Spencer Lanier. All right, 15 
19 years old out of Newburgh, Oregon. Good friends with Wes Gabrielson, Eric Lang, the whole Pacific Northwest crew. He takes on Eli Bertram. 17 out of Mount Carmel, Illinois, senior in high school. This is a match to 15. We'll switch ends at eight. And then one of these players takes on Jack Foster in the bronze. Shout out. So Bertram, as we have seen previously this weekend. Zero, zero. I believe he was voted the craziest spin serve here this weekend. Point. But he sure has a lot of other weapons at his disposal besides that serve, even though that serve Point, certainly helpful in getting him some free points. but just a really great player all around as well. Nice job from Lanier keeping Bertram pinned back, using that length up at the kitchen. Again, Lanier is six foot five. Something in the water these days. Oh, the pretzel! The pretzel! I love that the chat room on YouTube is having a giant discussion about cornhole slash bags. Depends where you're from in the country, what you call it. You've never heard it called bags? Oh, another mini pretzel. Side out. Two, one. Point. Wow. Just a really nice shot there down the line. Three, one. Side out. Just missing that back corner. An update on our ladies side as well in that bronze medal match. Ivy Cheddar defeating Dylan Champagne. It was 13-11 in the third game. So a battle, but a big congrats to Dylan, bronze medalist in singles. Dylan, excuse me, Ivy will face Riley Bonert in our gold which we are going to have coming up after this match. Three, three. Nice job from Bertram. A little cross court there catching Lanier as he's making his way up. Four, three. See, Lanier was a, kind of a direct line right to that right side, and Bertram caught him a little. Good leave. Side out. Easy ball to let go. So when you're very tall and that ball Three, is four. head height and still traveling. did such a great job here this whole time and then the foot oh, yeah. easy call there but gotta be frustrating after a really nice rally Side out. three four point Oh, 
four, four. Side out. Four, four. Both these guys know the importance of getting up to that kitchen. Point. It's Five, a little bit four. too floating there from Lanier. We saw Point. it in doubles the last two days. Eli Bertram loves the speed up, loves his drive. He Six, loves four. taking those off of the bounce as well. You're not going to see him be super aggressive and take volleys out of the air. Side He's up. more comfortable staying back a little bit. We saw him off that kitchen line and doubles consistently letting those dinks drop Four, looking for six. the speed up. So I think in singles we're going to stay see him hang back just a little Point. bit more. Five, six. Side out. Time did a great job being up the line. Couple nice volleys keeping Lanier back. Six, five. Side out. Five, six. Out. And Bertram gets a couple nice volleys, but it's actually when he backs up a little bit, Six, five. takes that shot off the bounce, but he has success. Seven, five. Side out. Job from Lanier holding off Bertram getting to eight and triggering the end Five, change seven. here in this match to 15. Point. Beautiful drive. So Garrett Whitehead was on the stream earlier today. He's actually sitting behind Six, uh, our players here talking to Austin right now, but he withdrew point. at the very last point of a match earlier today. It looked like he had tweaked a, a hip. Seven, seven. Or something, not too significantly. He wasn't, oh. <laughs> I was going to tell him, don't step on it until Bob ex inspects it. It's actually against the rules. But these kids are new. He's going to let it slide. But uh, he didn't withdraw from the, the tournament. He was going to play on. But I do see him sitting, and he obviously was defeated. I'm not sure by who, but you can look at the whole bracket for the day and the weekend on PickleballTournaments.com if you're interested to see how some of the players have done. Hopefully everyone has seen some new talent here this weekend that made you uh, a little excited for the future of pickleball and some of these new young players seven, seven. coming into the sport. Side out. Seven, seven. Side out. Bertram's put a couple of his serves into the net now in this match. Seven, seven. Point. All right, so it's Side Lanier who ten. holds on to get eight, that eighth seven, point one, first, two. triggering our end change here in this match to 15. Again, this is our final feeder match into bronze, oh, excuse me, I like hiccuped. Into bronze here for our gentlemen. Jack Foster is waiting in the bronze medal match. Austin Chikatilov in the gold. Speaking of Jack Foster, there he is, highlighting our next three stops in 2023. So we conclude this year in Kansas City in November, and next year we are in San Antonio, Texas in February. 
Overland Park, Kansas in July and Grapevine, Texas in November for our 2023 Next Gen Series stops. So if you have been intrigued by this Next Gen Series, perhaps you know a young player that loves pickleball and would love to come to one of these events, definitely check out those dates again. See if you can join us. They will enjoy it immensely, I promise. Great hands there from Lane. Good anticipation of where Bertram was going with that shot. job. Ten, seven. Side out. Great spot there from Bertram. Gets that pop-up from Lanier because Lanier has really no other seven, options ten. as he's Going into the wall for that shot. Point. And a free point off the serve. Eight, ten. Side out. Ten, eight. Side out. Watching Lanier when he got what looked like a very easy shot right there. Nine, ten. I think was a, a little too casual about that shot that he thought was going to be an easy winner, and Bertram read it very well. I think surprised Lanier a little bit ten, nine. coming back. Oh, the pretzel. Again, a couple really nice volleys there from both young men. Very close match here so far. And Bertram doing a good job keeping Lanier back there, but he makes a move forward. As he lets that bounce, goes for the speed up on a little bit too low of a ball. Point. Just a couple of errors here. I'd like to see a timeout from Bertram, but I don't. 13, nine. Lanier really just kind 14, of nine. figured out what is working for him here in this match, and he's stuck with it. Point. That's Game just wide, and again, Eli Final Bertram. Score, 15, really Lanier. nice showing this weekend. Very impressive young player. He will take fourth place here in our men's singles bracket. Really well done. Just a few too many errors those last couple rallies. Really allowed Lanier to just kind of cruise to the end of this match to 15. And he heads right into our bronze medal match to take on Jack Foster. But coming up first is going to be our ladies gold medal match. Riley Bonart will take on Ivy Cheddar which means there's going to be some, some fireworks. We're going to have some yelling from the ladies, but don't go anywhere. We're back into the action. We have two final matches of the day, which will be our two gold medal matches before we sign off here from Next Gen Dallas and Chicken and Pickle. 
Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully stick with us for our final two matches. And we're back into it right after this.
You guys missed it. I was singing Mariah Carey very badly, so I'm glad Mitch counted me in there so you guys didn't have to experience the torture of that. <laughs> you would have just line, let me go. go. You ready? All right. All right, ladies. Ladies, gold medal match. The women's open single gold medal match. Best two out of three. Game All right, one. Ivy Cheddar on the near zero, end. Zero. Coming through the bronze medal match, taking on Riley Bonert on the far end. Great spot there for Bonert right out of the gate. Bob Swisshelm, our referee. Zero, zero. Point. Ivy was number two on our standings list coming into today. So I think her results today, regardless One, of if she zero. wins here or not, will be enough to push her to first. I'm bad at math, though, and I haven't looked at it, so don't hold me to anything. But she has some hard work ahead of her to get a gold medal here. She'll have to win the two out of three zero, against zero. Riley and then a tiebreaker match. 2.15. Point. Three, zero. Point. We have a timeout have here from Cheddar, who is definitely Four a little zero. frustrated with how she started here in this first game. We, of course, have not got to see Cheddar play yet today on center court, so have not been able to see how she's been playing, how she's been feeling. Looking back at our bracket, though, let me take a quick peek. So Ivy was initially knocked down in her second match of the day by Ava Kussmeiter in three, very close match, 11-9, 5-11, So once she got knocked down, she had to face Ellie Smith and then Sarah Williams, winning both of those matches fairly easily, but then came up against Taylor Crabtree, snuck by 15-13. Then had to take out Lauren That's good. That's good. Mercado, 15-9, and then faced Dylan Champagne oh, in the bronze. So she has been grinding through the back draw. And in that bronze medal match, that score was 11-8, 6-11, 13-11. So she has had a long day in the back draw, but again, she has just put her head down, oh, done what she needed to do, and she's back here in the gold medal match. She has not played Riley today, so this is not a rematch. Six, zero. But right now it is Riley Bonart who is in control here Point. in game one, just hitting every shot she wants to. No errors really from her at all to speak of. Seven, zero. Wow, that just got more angled with each shot here as these ladies kept going more cross court. Finally, it is Bonart that gets the angle that is the winner. Side out. Zero, eight. Bonert, you can tell, is just really dictating these. Cheddar is getting pulled off of her feet with each of these shots. She's almost hitting her paddle on the ground after each one because of the effort she's had to exert. An error there on the return. You know, again, she's had a tough day, long weekend. She's had good results 
each day. And I'm sure she's Boy. just feeling feeling the strain a little bit here at the end of the weekend. Ten, zero. Thank you, Jessica. I was wondering if Riley would get enough right points out. winning this to get into first place. Yep, you are correct. Thank you so much, Jessica, for doing the math. I was going to ask someone to help me out, but... So Jessica is correct, helping me out. Whoever wins this match will be our first place finisher here for Next Gen and crowned Next Gen champion. One, ten. Point. Two, ten. Right. I love it. Cheddar puts her second point on the board. She's still down 210, and she lets out a warrior yell. I mean, that shows she's fighting. Excuse me, she has three. She's fighting. She's going to fight here. Side out. Ten, three. That will be the match with a return wide. All right, we'll see if Riley can take this gold medal in two or will Ivy Cheddar force her to a third game to determine if she is still in the running to get that gold medal match and perhaps the first place finish this weekend. We take a short break. Back into the action right after this. Welcome back, everyone. Game number two here for our ladies' gold medal match. Riley Bonert on the near end for the second game. Takes on Ivy Cheddar on the far end. So as I mentioned previously, leading the day for our ladies coming in on the standings was Sarah Williams with 420 points. She did not place here today, though. So Ivy Cheddar with 360 Taylor Crabtree with 330 also did not place, so she'll drop out. And then Riley Bonert with 320. So absolutely coming down to how this match ends. One of these ladies is going to take first place, and one of these ladies is going to take second, I believe. 
for our men. Austin Shikatilov was out in front with 600. Vasilio Cabiesis with 480, tied with Jack Foster and Eli Bertram, both with 480 as well. Jack Foster currently taking on Spencer Lanier in our men's bronze medal match happening next to us. One, zero. I also was told in between games I did not realize in the bronze medal match, I guess Ivy Cheddar kind of tweaked her right ankle. She does have some KT tape on there. You'll see her shaking it a little bit. I did not realize that, so that is probably going to be uh, putting her at a bit of a deficit in this gold medal match. Not quite at 100% for her. So I think not able to go for as much as perhaps she'd like to. Four, zero. Side out. Zero, four. Oh, yeah, a little too high there. Riley Bonart, bit of a hook shot put away here. I mean, I had a bit of a, bit of a side swinging overhead there. Follows it up with a free point off that return wide. Five, zero. Yeah. <laughs> Bonert lets this drop because I think she didn't know if it was coming in or not and then <laughs> dumps it Zero, into the net. Point. One, five. Cheddar's doing Point. a great job. She's still fighting here, even though she has that bit of an ankle issue. Two, five. Oh, yeah, that's just such Side a great up. angle there from Bonart. Oh, boy. Oh, we got a bit of a limp. Ooh, that angle might have done a little bit more damage. Five, two. Out. Cheddar's having a lot of success success when she is able to get up to that Zero line and five. keep Boner back. Again, I, we talk about Point. it every time we watch the ladies play. I think also, depending who you're playing, if they stay back Zero a little more five. often, you tend to stay back a little bit more often. When we saw Riley take on Dylan Champagne in the winter bracket final, Dylan got her butt to the line all the time. And I think Bonert did so because she knew she had to to counter that. Where here, she's taking a little bit more time getting up to that kitchen, trying to make a move. I think she has been in control much more often when she does get up to that line and keeps Cheddar back. I think she, yep. So make that move up again. I mean, it's just so important. If you're able to get up there, keep your opponent back, really opens up some options that you're not going to have otherwise. Seven, three. Side out. Three, seven. 
That was coming back in, but the fan blade hit the ball. You can see it as it shoots over to the other court. Oh, that was totally coming back in. That was going to be playable, and then the fan blade was like, nope. <laughs> oh, tough. Seven, four. Point. Again, Cheddar not using her timeouts, I think. Oh, I love that Boner took that out of the air. Way to be aggressive, way to get up there. Again, especially with that ankle issue, if Cheddar's going to stay back, she's going to have to move a lot more. Hey, Shay! That's tough. Cheddar giving up a couple points here. It's going to be a gold medal match point here for Riley Bonert. And she point. will Game get it match. done in two. Final and I do, I love how much these, four. everyone here just match is such great friends Bonert. and has such a fun time together. Even though they're competing fiercely for the title. They have a great time doing it, which I love to see. So a big congrats. Ivy Cheddar, our silver medalist, and I believe will be second place finisher here for Next Gen Dallas. But Riley Bonert will take the top spot. We'll head to the Franklin studio as she is done for the day. And then we will have that men's gold medal match as soon as our bronze finishes up over there. Jack Foster and Spencer Lanier doing battle, as you can see. Perhaps if they are still uh, have a ways to go, maybe we'll just put up this camera angle so you guys can watch them while we're waiting. But we'll figure that out. I'll let you know. We head to the Franklin Studio right after this. Welcome back to the Franklin Studio. Lauren McLaughlin here with our gold medalist and first place finisher here in Next Gen Dallas, Riley Bonert. Congratulations. You were able to get it done into there against Ivy. You had not played her yet today. So how did you feel coming into the gold medal match just in terms of how you were feeling physically, mentally going into that gold medal match? Yeah, so I figured out it wasn't a concussion. I just need some food. Good. So Good. we figured that out. <laughs> um, so I got some food in me and got playing better and just felt like really ready to play. I was really excited actually. And unfortunately Ivy rolled her ankle in the last match. So I was really hoping that we would have gotten a, a better match than she did, but I felt very bad for her, but she played well considering, yeah. um, but it was very exciting. I mean, this is your first time ever winning next gen. You said before we got on here, hopefully not your last, yes. but sort of 
that's a big first for you. What are your plans in terms of maybe next gen for the rest of this year, next year, or bigger tournaments? What's sort of your goal for maybe the rest of this year, next year, in terms of your pickleball trajectory? Yeah. So I'm planning right now, I have a lot more tournaments. I leave again on Thursday for the APP Alabama tournament, so I'm excited for that. But I'm planning on doing um, as many next-gen tournaments as I possibly can, um, possibly till I age out, because they're really fun for me. Um, but also, I'm also going to do a lot of pro events on the APP tour and maybe a couple PPA. Oh, well, that's fantastic. I know the people at home have certainly enjoyed watching you and seeing you get a little bit better as you've gone through next gen. And we have Ken Herman. Oh, God. And Austin. And Austin. <laughs> He's crashing, crashing. Are we, are we just getting photobombed? <laughs> yes, yes. We're just, we're By the just Amazon getting, man. Yeah. <laughs> the Amazon man. Riley, it is with great pleasure. Yana Gritschkino, Rachel Sumner, Amanda Henry. And now we add your name to the future next-gen stars that are making a big break in pickleball. We're very proud of you. You played lights out all weekend long. Congratulations on behalf of APP and the Chicken and Pickle. Yay. Yay. Any final shout-outs to anybody before we sign off? Uh, my dad. Your dad. Best coach ever. <laughs> and my mom back home. I love it. Well, congratulations to Riley Bonert, our next-gen champion for the ladies here in Next Gen Dallas. We will crown him. A, a gentleman winner as well. That's coming up after our gold medal match, final match of the day. So don't go anywhere before we sign off here from Dallas. We'll see you back into the action right after this.
We are launching Selkirk TV, which brings the best pickleball content to your smartphone, tablet, and big screen TV. This is 24-7 Pickleball, proudly brought to you by Selkirk.
All right, folks, we are having a barn burner of a third game in our men's bronze medal match. Spencer Lanier on the right over there taking on Jack Foster. Just wanted to quick give you guys a uh, sneak peek of what we're doing here. We decided to come out of our commercials to let you guys watch the conclusion of this match. We'll not be on the mic. Uh, eh, I can be on the mic probably a little bit. I mean, it, it's a little far away, so tough to see, but we thought you guys would enjoy at least watching this. It is 7-7. Seven, seven. Lanier serving right now. So, no, I'm, I'm not going to bore you guys with more of my voice, but just so you're aware, keep score yourself. Jack is now serving 7-7 seven, seven in game three. Winner will head to gold to take on Austin Chikolatov. So, enjoy. And then we'll be into the action here shortly.
Welcome back. Our players have taken matters into their own hands. They've done the coin toss themselves. <laughs> Bob's job is null and void. Oh, Ken, I forgot you were joining me. Other way. Turn it around. There you go. <laughs> Ready? We are. Do you want to talk a little? Make sure we hear you. Next Gen Dallas finals. Woo, let's go. Final match. A lot of excitement out here. I'm writing checks to everybody. Everyone's winning some prize money today. I know. The ladies just ecstatic. Some of these ladies were like, <laughs> I got how much money? This is the best day of my life. Oh, my so the, gosh. Like losing their minds. I'll let, don't spend it all in one place, ladies. So we pay out 7500 to the top men and then another 7500 to the top women. Mm -hmm. Riley was our next-gen champion. Yep. $2,500. Mm -hmm. And then we paid that down to fifth place, which got $500. So this warms my heart. This is a great way for them to have some money for their future tournaments, their expenses, mm -hmm. and I love it because it's just all about them, these next-gen players. Sarah Williams just bought a new iPhone, <laughs> so she, that's what she's they're all giving using me the hugs. money for. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm Papa Santa Claus or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's fantastic. So <laughs> for our men's gold medal match, last match of the day here in Dallas before yeah. we sign off. Again, we're back next weekend in Alabama. Very excited for I mean, Alabama. first <laughs> time there. Covered 20, courts. 24 covered courts. Dedicated Young, courts. The, the Opelika Pickleball Club, an amazing facility. We're very excited about hanging out there next week. And this is our th that will be our third week on the road, Sacramento, yep, yep. next gen Dallas, and then we're in Alabama. Yep, one week off and then right back into it, Houston. Houston and Hilton Head. Hilton Head. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Hilton right. Head's one of my favorite places. I love it. So, all right, Bob Swissell, finally on court. We're ready to go. We have Austin Chikatilov on the far end, 23 years old, out of Fernandina Beach, Florida, currently in school to be a chiropractor, also a nutritionist. Also the Amazon man. The Amazon man, absolutely swinging through the trees with the greatest of ease. Eating. Spencer Lanier on the near end. Eating 10 pounds of protein every meal. <laughs> I mean, at least. First of all, I love that both of these guys are 6'5". Yeah. I mean, that's why neither looks tall with the other because they're both gi giants, just absolute Zero, giants. Zero. And I did talk to Spencer before this match, and he said his feet are burning. So someone mentioned he, he looks like he's struggling a little. I, I don't know if he'll be struggling a ton, but I, he doesn't really know why. You know, I've had that before when it's very, very hot outside. Yeah. Um, and he did say he was playing in bed not too long ago, and it was, you know, in the hundreds. But, yeah, so I guess he is struggling a little, having some, some hot feet. Oh. Hey, Mike, let's go! <laughs> oh, Spencer was done. Look at this. Spencer was done. He thought that was it. Turned around. Oh, Great hit that by line. Austin. Yeah, well, he said, know, fight, let's Spencer's go. Spencer's got a lot of support there in Pacific Northwest. Eric Lang and Wes Gabrielson have both yep. been texting me. <laughs> you know, signs of encouragement for their... Up and coming star in that area. Pickleball is mm -hmm. definitely growing in that region. They've got some terrific For players sure. out there. So again, uh, Chikatilov is coming through our winner bracket. So he is in a good spot here. Lanier would have to win the two out of three and a tiebreaker match to 15. I've been very impressed with Austin all weekend long. Absolutely. He seems very poised, very confident, very sure about himself as he's out there playing. 
But not um, in like an arrogant cocky not way at, at all. all. Such a so polite nice to see. young man. I'm sure his mom is in Florida right now cheering him on. I've got the pleasure to meet her at other APP tour stops. Nice little cat and mouse here. I did not. I, I tell you, I I'm know. at the point with Austin that I'm eating my chicken and waffles here, and he walks by One, and I'm like two. hiding them because yeah, I feel guil I feel guilty that I'm having waffles. Point. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I had he, mac and cheese all weekend, so he is who am an I inspiration for all to be as two, fit two. as we can. You've got to be fit to be at the highest level of this game. You really do. I mean, great Point. job from Lanier. He's kind of back at that baseline. Just keeping it in play. Three, two. Some nice shots here. Point. Stays in off the net. I've gotten to visit with Spencer a little bit. A very, very polite, soft-spoken gentleman. Mm -hmm. uh, Four, two. Very eager to keep improving upon his game. He's at community college right now. He shared with me trying to finish mm -hmm. that up and just trying to, you know, make that transition from 5.0 to you know, pro pickleball. I think he's had a, a great experience here with Next Gen. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, yeah, we're gonna need uh, that. He lost his whole knee. Oh my gosh, he literally, like, he took his whole knee off with that. That was. Are we going to replay on that? We I wonder, I wonder, I don't know if that? his foot went underneath. No, I think he just, I think he just slipped. And he's so tall, so far to fall. <laughs> oh, oh, that hurts me. That hurts me. Nope, well, all right, we're, we're going to show it. Spencer came in on a good approach. I pulled yeah, Austin just, out wide. It, was, it just slipped on his shoe. Yeah, just and it was the such a great angle. He just didn't him. expect it. Had to change course so quickly. But also, it looks like Chekatilov is feeling a little tight over there. Looks like he is stretching out that that right sort of hip quad. He is. He's got a little limp going on. I see it. I think he's a little tight. Maybe cramps or something. I mean, that just shows how tough pickleball is on your body, especially singles. Well, we started today at 7.30. We had a yeah, full... Yeah, he's been playing all weekend. We had a full it's pack draw, and... I mean, even if you are just as fit as fit can be, it's a grind on your body, just... Bob Swisselm with the first aid kit. I feel like he's going to bust out of that when he moves. All right. Oh. Time in, gentlemen. Oh, that's Three, so four. tough so early on here in this first game. Point. Four, four. Oh, a little long on that. Side out. All right, four, back on four. board. Four, four. Just wide there. It'll be interesting to see if Lanier here. I mean, anytime four, you four. injure yourself, even if it's taped up, you, you're thinking about it now. It's kind of in the back of your mind. 
Uh, great great volley. Spot. Caught him on position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both these guys, again, they're so big and tall. They're catching each other four, four. at angles that makes it difficult for them to quickly move. I did indeed four, see some four. blood. Oh, yeah, again, just. And when they are so long and lengthy, you have to hit those angles. It's the four, angles four. that's going to get those shots out of reach. Side out. Four, four. Point. Good, good serve by Austin. Austin's got a very deep serve Five, with a four. lot of. It's a very heavy ball. A lot of not side spin, but like a top spin serve. Side out. Getting really low on those drives, but. Four, five. Great hands. Oh. Well, he had set it Side up. Out. Yeah, really good. nicely done. Good foot, be foot speed by Spencer Four, just five. to recover to get back into that ball. Side out. I think Spencer's got to do a little more work on his serve as he heads back home. Five, a little more four. depth, a little bit more pace he can get on that ball. Point. Austin's being able to attack at it right now a little too easily. Six, four. Point. Oh, yeah. Off that line, skipped a little bit. You've been doing a good job being able to volley some of these shots at the net. Point. Chikatilov starting to pull away a little here, but he is moving slowly. I mean, we've seen him earlier this weekend. He, he did say after his winter bracket final win, Eight, you know, he, he's feeling pretty tired. <laughs> Austin does a great job for a six foot five gentleman to get down to the ball. You can see even here, four, eight. he's always being down oh, with yeah. his legs, not bending with his back, but using his legs and his core. Great four. drive. Five, eight. Oh, geez, I almost went down again. Oof. serve there from Spencer. Uh, Side out. Problem with that ball is he ended up being five feet behind his baseline after he hit his, he hit his serve. Ideally he wants to hold on to his line, take that ball more on the rise on that opening passing shot. Side out. Five, eight. Again, they have so much length. Other players do not get this shot. We saw Austin get one that Spencer didn't think was coming back, just flipped it around there. They just, their wingspan is so 
much more than most players. It's a good pattern. Austin took the approach to Spencer's forehand, pulled him out of position, then made the backhand vulnerable by exposing it and was able to get a decent first volley in off that side. There's the angle. Well done. Good roll on that ball by Austin. Seems to be a pattern of his right now that he feels it's working. So we have an offensive timeout here from Austin. As he is going to have a game point, wants to just refresh, take a moment, crack some things, <laughs> and just refocus with simply this next rally in mind. I got the flexibility. It's just, it's rude. It's rude to be that flexible. He is a self-proclaimed yogi, loves doing yoga, nutritionist, all kinds of stuff. I mean, if you're going to be swinging through the trees, Ken, as the Amazon man, I mean, I suspect you got to have some good flexibility. Great flexibility. I think both players do. Austin certainly is making uh, an impression upon many individuals here this weekend. All right, it's up game point, 10-6. Time in, gentlemen. 10, 6. I mean, that's a nice way to win a game. Really well constructed. He set it the point up himself. Yeah, really nicely, nicely done. Flew across that sideline for his... His what? He just trailed off. I love it. His, his Ernie. Big Ernie. His big Ernie. <laughs> we will take a short break. Game number two here in our final match of the weekend, our men's gold medal match. Coming your way right after this. Bye to Deej. Bye, Deej. DJ, peace it out. DJ Young out. All right, welcome back, everyone, to All game right, two here in our ready? final match of the weekend. It is our men's singles gold medal game match. Two. Austin Chikatilov, 23 years old, out of Florida on the near end, takes on 19 year old Spencer Lanier out of Oregon. Side out. Lanier took quite a spill in game one. 
taken, I think, most of the skin off that right knee. <laughs> Well, if Spencer's going to try to make an impression in this second game, I think there's three things he's got to do. One, zero. One, he's got to serve better, try to get the ball deeper off his serves to prevent Austin from coming in as efficiently as he has. But Side second out. thing is he's got to hit, stick his opening volley a little bit more, a little bit more with depth, a little bit more bite on his opening volley. Austin moves so well. Zero, one. You don't want to give him enough chances to pass him. The third thing is the same thing we saw there. He's five feet behind the baseline. You've got to hit that serve, hold on to your line, that take the ball a little bit more on the rise and give Austin less time to get into the net. Look, Austin's on that line. I saw it out. He missed the pass, Very but close, he's taking yeah. the ball much Zero, more one. earlier and preventing Spencer from getting to the line as, as tight as he wants one. to in that first volley. Mm -hmm. One, one. Side out. It's, a, it's a tough uh, road here for Spencer Lanier. He will have to win the two out of three and a match to 15 if he wants gold. So Austin certainly in a good position here. Ultimately, regardless of how this match ends up, I believe Austin has already sort of solidified his spot as the top one, one. finisher on our men's side, is that right? We've done a preliminary list and he is on top regardless of what happens. Football! Yeah. <laughs> he knew it. He laughs. Point. Tried to get out of the kitchen here. <laughs> he was like, oh no. <laughs> Couldn't get his foot Point out one. fast enough and reestablish. Oh, that Not was a ball. nice angle. Again, taken out of the air creates less time for Lanier to set up and anticipate where he's going with that. Point. Two, two. Side out. Strong wrist Spencer has. You can see the compactness on that volley. Two, two. Austin just using that length to take some of those balls out of the air and volley them, putting them in a good spot there. Three, three. Austin does a great job when he gets pulled out wide, really pushing off on that. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh. To continue it, he does a great job of pushing off on his outer edge foot and Four, really gets three. himself back into position well. Good approach shot by Spencer. Well done. Now that's a positive. He's got to keep working on that. Great approach shot on that ball. Time out receiver. Time three, out. Four, one minute. These guys just battle of the giants out here. Just the shots that they're able to get to, their movement on the court. The rallies are going so much longer because they can get to shots other players cannot. And because you have two players that can do that, yeah, just really extending far longer than it would have gone. Oof. 
Well, again, the whole purpose of Next Gen is to have it be a building block for that 16 to 23 year old as they're transitioning from the amateur ranks to the pro ranks. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of wild cards for some of the younger kids underneath that that if they submit an essay to the wild card committee, we let a couple of them come on in. The thing that I think I love also is some of those younger plays, players, the 12, 13, 14 year olds, they know they're not going to win. They don't care. That's not what it's about for them. They're coming. They're having fun with their friends. Oh, my goodness. Good point. I mean, yeah, they're, we, we they're having good competition. They're doing drills. They're getting lunch. They're oh, getting the, the mentorship. And the seminars. The seminars it's fantastic. It's, it's they, lo they love it. It's a training development camp weekend with, uh, with the tournament as well. Good point. Yeah, again, just what a rally. Get probably, what, seven shots longer than, than the average one would have been? Four, three. Uh, I don't know what happened. Oh, he, he looked right over at Bob. I thought he thought something had happened. I think he was going to let that ball go out Five, or? No, oh, he's just upset with himself. Point. All right, Spencer's got to keep it a little bit more controlled here. A couple of unforced Six, errors. I love the technique on Spencer's backhand. I love three, how he's six. keeping that paddle above the net. Every time he's making contact with the volley off that backhand side. Point. Fired up, he can sense that finish within sight. He is going for a triple crown this weekend here for next gen. Oh, good spot, good recovery off the net. Just Point. tough break. Five, eight. Side out. Great spot. It was an interesting pair in that time. Spencer, that time, elected to approach down the middle, trying to jam Austin up and trying to give him no angles on that opening pass. Five, he had a little success that time. Side out. A lot of racket head, uh, paddle head speed as he's going through that forehand there. Really gets all this body weight onto that forehand. Side out. Just a little low. Five, nine. 
Good Great serve. serve. Those Point. are the type of serves he's got to keep trying to mount here if he's going to try to get a comeback. Six, he's got to keep Austin off the net. Point. Let's see a timeout here. Side out. Side out instead. Two points away from getting that Nine, triple seven. crown here and a first place finish. Yeah. Point. Good attack there. Again, speeding up at the body. Not as expected in singles. Well, not really at the body. Right. Ten, Was that a bad angle? <laughs> Championship a point. That looked a little long, but. Side out. Seven, ten. Point. Great shot. Wow. I thought Austin hit a great approach uh, about two inches off the baseline Eight, down ten. the middle. Spencer still came up with an angle as he was falling off that forehand. Okay. Oh, he's down. The left hand. Oh, he's acting. Nope, nope, nope. You can, so you can only do so much. You can only do so much. And again, I mean, the fact that he got this next shot with his left hand, mind you, Unbelievable. Timeout receiver. Yeah, it's Nine, a great ten, timeout. Especially after exerting that much energy. Just refocus, grab your breath, grab a drink, towel off. Just got to get one stop and one point. I mean, Spencer Lanier has just absolutely... We've had a lot of good stories come out of Next Gen this week. Oh my gosh, so a many lot. new faces that I have not met yet, even through Next Gen, seeing some new, like some returning faces to Next Gen. It's just so much fun. Everyone has such a great time. It's almost like the, the tournament aspect of it takes a back seat to all the other things. Well, how great was Paul Owen this weekend? Ugh, Paul. All the players really enjoyed having Paul, APP partnering with the senior pro in, players to come out and provide Nine, a mentorship ten. program for all of our youngsters. Paul just related so well with all the players. Very, yeah, they had a great time. Very great to have him. Great job taking that out of the air. Point. Wow, and again, I think the tables turned in that rally when Spencer was able to take some of those ten, ten. dinks as volleys. Oh, he has tied it up here, so. Ten, ten. Oh, wow, point. big serve there big from Chikatilov. Second championship ten, point. Ten. That's the shot he wants. Again, you can't. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Again. The crowd going nuts. Oh, oh, what a fantastic second game here. I mean, Spencer Lanier gave it everything gave here it in this everything. second game. I did not expect it to be this close. He played phenomenal. He is our second place finisher here in singles. Silver medalist, but it is Austin Chikatilov who will take the top spot. And the Triple Crown here at Next Gen Dallas. So we are done here for the day. I'll head to the Franklin Studio with you one final time before we sign off. But thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Hopefully you enjoyed, if seeing a Next Gen tournament for the first time, you enjoyed getting to see this action. Uh, Austin's just going to, like, pass out on the side. <laughs> As he's... He's just, re he's just ready. He's like, yep, I'm good, guys. Waiting for my interview. <laughs> he's going to take a seat here. He's losing the shoes. Love right. it. Well, I'm going right. to go get the trophy. Let's go, go get that trophy. Let's, Let's go, do our go to the Franklin studio. We're back into it right after this.
Welcome back one final time to the Franklin Studio, Lauren McLaughlin, here with gold medalist, first place finisher, triple crown, here at Next Gen Dallas, Austin Chikatilov. I mean, what, what, how are you feeling? Feeling great. I went total Amazon mode today. That was my mentality. So I just wanted to finish the weekend off strong and keep getting stronger day by day, match by match. And I think I did that. So. I mean, it, it doesn't get much better than the triple crown finish here this weekend. I think going up against someone who's the same height as you in Spencer is a little unique. Not a lot of people are going to be as tall as you on the court, across the net. You guys can both get to some balls that no other player can get to. I think both of you were surprised a couple times yeah. that some shots came back and those sure. rallies lasted as long. Yeah. What's it like knowing you don't necessarily have the advantage of height playing someone that has the same advantage. Yeah, it's definitely a unique experience. He's very smooth and I really like his game. He likes to play slow and I need more of that. I need to play people like that because I play a lot of people who just play really fast. So I had to adjust to his game and he played really well. So kudos to Spencer. Um, but I came out on top today, so super happy. I mean, fantastic weekend for you. Let's bring in Ken Herman with our trophy. Not even close to as big as you. Oh, Normally on. they're bigger than the players. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, oh, the photo bomb is back. <laughs> That's she couldn't pick, she should have picked you up. <laughs> All right, Austin, congratulations. You, your name comes on a list of other winners from Next Gen, J.W. Johnson, Gabriel Tardio, and now we are proud to award you Next Gen Dallas winner. I, I feel there's been so many great stories that have come out of Dallas this weekend, and you certainly are one of them. You. I know your mom's probably very proud watching you back home. Yeah. But congratulations, our Next Gen Dallas champion. Well done. Woo! And you. anything final to say before we sign off? I just got to give a shout out to D, who gave me the nickname Amazon Man. So thank you for that. I'm riding with it. Let's go crazy. Go wild. All right. Well, we are going to be seeing you for sure yeah. more on the scene. Can't wait. And certainly at Next Gen, hopefully in Kansas City before you sure. age out one more time. time. Yeah. But thank you so much for joining us here in Dallas. Always a pleasure. Thank you to Dee Davison running our tournament desk. Bob Swisshelm and Courtney Johnson, our referees. Uh, Pickleball TV running our production, Mitch DeVoe. Vi, I forgot your last name. Peak. Vi Peak. I got it. Sorry. I nice. almost, I, can't, I came in clutch right there, guys. But thank you so much for joining us, whether it was on Facebook or YouTube. We always appreciate you guys supporting us at home. The APP Tour is in Alabama next weekend. So definitely join us on the stream once again for some new faces hitting the podium, I'm sure. For Ken Herman, for the APP Tour, we will see you guys in a week. Thank you so much.